Today's episode of No Fun TV is brought to you by Roots of Fight. Check them out at rootsoffight.com and be sure to hit subscribe for your chance to win an awesome prize pack. Welcome to the No Fun C podcast, episode seven. Got a little bit of housekeeping to do and a couple announcements. So first things first, we had a giveaway, two comic books from episode five. David Daneman was in the house. A bunch of people, the whole thing was they were supposed to comment the Daneman on any of the YouTube podcast videos. Okay. And subscribe. Okay. But like 90% of people commented the Daneman and didn't subscribe. Uh-huh. You gotta, so you gotta subscribe. You, you gotta listen. There's more of this coming too, I imagine. Uh, there is. So yeah. you gotta listen. And honestly, if you haven't subscribed, you should because your odds of winning right now are super good. Jago Star won. I guess that's how you say it. Uh, we have a winner. Yeah, you have won because you subscribed and you commented the Damon on episode six or five, one of those two. So these two books are coming to you. You got to DM me. So uh, DM me on Instagram and we'll figure this out for you. At? At Marisady. It's on the YouTube channel of and course. the page and all the links and all that jazz. So uh, Jiggle Star one uh you win you get your two copies and i'll send that to you asap uh the other thing is that where do i begin with this one so i did a video about a limited edition jacket by a company called roots of fight cool and then i had got i thought in the video i got charged 250 dollars for shipping and handling us which is crazy right and as soon as I posted the video, the owner of the company reached out to me and he's like, Hey, Mayer, this is Jesse from Roots of Fight. And I saw your video. Awesome stuff. Uh, you shouldn't have been charged that money. We're rectifying it for you right now. And it turns out I wasn't even charged that. It was just on the slip for some reason. So it just confused me. Right. So long story short, they figured it out right away. And then he's like, great video. We're going to send you some shit too. So this week, actually on Monday yesterday i got a random package like this is like a month later and it had oh sick it had three t-shirts so this one and i'm wearing tyson and then these two that are based on the fighter and the kid and below the belt podcast which they did a collaboration with which had the jacket like part of it so that's why they gave me these two and this one's just a new shirt that they came out with so please check out roots of fight um, if you're into MMA boxing or old school wrestling type, uh, nostalgia gear and a bunch of their stuff's limited edition, uh, some of it's not, they got great stuff. So super thankful to Jesse, super thankful to, um, Roots of Fight and yeah, I'll be sporting these on my channel for sure. Uh, very cool. Yeah. And Gotta love those when the free stuff starts rolling in because they, they appreciate what you're doing. Definitely. I wasn't going to mention this in this podcast, but I will. I'm getting a package tomorrow. Um, back in December, I got an email randomly from Orangutan Wheels and Loaded Boards. And you know Orangutan Wheels and Loaded Boards. Yeah. If you don't, if you look behind Alex, there's a skateboard back there. That deck and those wheels are from Orangutan Wheels and Loaded um, They saw one of my videos about a review I did about their wheels. And they contact me and they're like, hey, we saw your video, blah, 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 blah. Just wanted to say hi. And I'm like, that's cool. It was Kyle from Orangutan. So shout out to Kyle. I'm like, awesome, Kyle. I'm like, is there any way we could collaborate together? And he's like, yeah, sure. Why not? What were you thinking? And I threw him like a bunch of ideas. I'm thinking this guy's just going to say yes to one of them. Kyle says yes to all of them. <laughs> Long story short, <laughs> like, oh, like, I was they, shocked. They've got someone good in marketing. Yeah, and you know what? Like, I'm no Casey Neistat. You know what I mean? Like, I got 200 subscribers, so yeah. shout out to Kyle. Anyway, they're sending me like $600 worth of merch Sick. for myself as giveaways for the YouTube channel, as giveaways to our group rides Love and our e-skate meetups. Love so it. for the next six, four to six months or so, I will be kind of collaborating with them in some ongoing stuff. And you'll see more of that in another type of video that I'll be doing with them. Um, so super stoked about that and that package arrives tomorrow. That being said, let's introduce you, Alex, because we got to talk about what we're doing here today and yes. why you're even here. So join with me today, episode seven. 
is Alex Hillman. That's and right. Alex is both known as the good guy biker, and he's also known as a crypto king. That's right. And Alex, why don't you describe what both those things are? Both those starting things with are. the good guy biker. Okay. Um, yeah, so the good guy biker is a, a really good place to start. I think that sets up the foundation of everything we do. Uh, it's where all our goodwill comes from. Many years ago, so I've been uh, doing YouTube for a long time, and we've we've sold a lot of channels. We've done a lot of outreach. It's, it's something I really love. One of our videos we did from a charity ride uh, on a motorcycle ride through the Vespa shop here in Vancouver. I pulled over to help a blind man. A year or two later, someone had posted just that 45 second clip of me pulling over to help the blind man, and it just went bonkers crazy online. It went viral, and we were getting interviewed interviewed by the Ellen show and Good Morning America and CNN and all the different Canadian news stations and so they were calling it the Canadian good guy biker mm -hmm. I didn't think anything of it it was just a video of us on a Vespa charity ride yeah you know um, but it, I realized really quick that I was getting all these messages from people it's how inspired they were by such a simple act mm -hmm. uh, and I learned really quickly that we could put a lot of good out in the world through the good guy biker stuff. So we kept that up. We continued to do more. And it wasn't something I went out and tried to do at first. We would just leave the camera running on different group rides. And when we went back country, and we encountered, I encountered a woman stealing mail at Christmas one time and I made, made a return at all. Um, old people had a tarp under their car that was wrecking their wheel well. All sorts of really interesting things happen. And uh, you get the opportunity to do good. But then you also get the opportunity to share that good. Mm -hmm and inspire a lot of other people. It just so happens that on the motorcycle, we always have the camera running. Yeah. But most people, especially here in Canada, I feel get up for people on the bus. They stop when they see someone in need. You know, People really try to help when they can. So I think this is normal behavior, but being in these unique situations like on an electric skateboard, you have a camera running, mm -hmm. you can share that. So that's that, that's the good guy biker stuff, and we've done millions and millions and mil millions of views on on those videos. Um, we've licensed them dozens of times. They've been featured all over the web. It ended up leading to a lot of different business opportunities, being paid by Daily Motion and Break and Live Leak and YouTube and all these other different communities. It's led to a lot of brand ambassador work, like okay. what you were refer referring to. Yeah. They pay us an hourly, a lot of product placement. You know, paying me to wear watches or sunglasses or review different uh, electronics or motorcycle parts. So it's it's been a blessing for sure. It's been a wild ride. Do, doing what you love, doing nice things while you do what you love for other people. And then having that turn into a, a living for you, it's it's wild ride. That brings us to the crypto kings. Let's so go. so, yeah. So being project driven. So we I've had a I had a repair shop for many years where I repaired phones and electronics, did some really high end work. But I got I got really sick of owning a repair shop really quickly. It only lasted about two and a half years. Um, I loved I loved having co op students around. Yeah. I loved teaching people about the tech. I loved. Uh, enable. I couldn't give these people an hourly wage because they were in the high school co-op program. Okay. But I, I would give them laptops and all the. I buy them the toolkits that they needed, and they start fixing all their friends' computers and their parents' their friends' parents' phones. And that I love that. I love watching people uh, grow opportunity and grow into business. But every day I left, there was someone tapping their foot at five thirty, waiting at the the door as I was leaving. And every morning I showed up, there was someone tapping their foot, waiting for me when I arrived and with my casual lifestyle you know it's it was my shop it wasn't there wasn't you know I, Christ for a year and a half you had to come through the back of a motorcycle shop to even get in there uh, so it, was, it wasn't even like it was in the back of a storage unit for the shop next door yeah and it was great we were doing like $2,800 a day in cash all the time mm -hmm. but like the hundredth time I fixed a red ring of death on an Xbox or I replaced a gear in the DVD drive of a PlayStation or swap the glass on an iPhone. Oh, I got so sick of that so fast. And so I, I ended up closing it because it's just, it wasn't interesting. I wasn't learning anymore. And at the beginning, I was learning so much. So tell people what exactly uh, Crypto Kings yeah. is, what you guys do, yeah. how you got started. So we got, we got, shit, we made a lot of money fast. We did really good. So we got in. So Crypto Kings is Spencer and I found a company. Yeah. And 
out of nowhere, we did almost $280,000 worth of sales in our first month. Just bam. And we're pushing close to $2 million worth of sales now. What year was this? This was, uh, we started start? in 2017. Okay. Yeah, December was really our first month of operations, 2017. Yeah. Um, now, we had been mining, I'd been mining, and then we had been mining up until that point prior to that, several months beforehand, which is what it had given us all, Spencer and I, all this money to put into this new equipment and go scale. There was a lot of people in the space that had gotten really wealthy really quickly. Yeah. At the beginning of 2017 or in 2016, they had put $4,000 into Bitcoin or Ethereum. Mm -hmm. And now comes December 2017, they're worth $1.6 million, quite quite literally. Like their total. The, they, their $4,000 of Ethereum is now worth $1.6 yeah. million. Mm -hmm. Like that's the math. And so we were fortunate enough to talk, talk a lot of these people into what I would call good business practices and good financial practices. Instead of waiting for the Bitcoin to go to 40,000, sell them all at 20, buy them back up at 3.5, sell them again when they hit 100. Like, yeah. There's a lot of ways you can approach this instead of just holding it. Totally. Now, so we, business went great, goodwill. We actually avoided a lot of the pitfalls, which is where we've been successful throughout the year. But let me let me just stop here for a second and say, Cryptocurrency is a is an inherently risky space right now. Mm -hmm. It's brand new. It's lacking a lot of uh, legislation and regulation. It's the wild west as far as investments are concerned. It's like the internet was ten years ago. It's the wild west. We started by building machines. Yeah. By by what we there's two ways to go with cryptocurrency. You can go the commercial route, which is what the ASIC miners are. Yeah. And so when you see a farm in China, a whole warehouse full of these computer machines, mm -hmm. these little silver boxes with the black fans, those are ASICs. Those, an ASIC refers to Application Specific Integrated Circuitry. So this is, this is a piece of hardware that was designed to only do that one thing. And that one thing is do the math that's associated with the calculations required to unlock a block on a specific algorithm on the blockchain. What does that actually mean in layman terms? It means that that computer that they built is really good at guessing numbers in a way that that blockchain needs. It's, it's essentially number guessing. Okay, So the difficulty with ASICs is they lose their profitability really quick due to the maturing of the market, the, the arms race with this hardware. The, the difficulty rating, the more people mining a particular coin, the, the less likely it is for you as a person or as a company to get the rewards. It's more likely that someone else is going to get lucky. Yeah. And so your difficulty rating goes up. But as the, this happens, generally the price rises. Um, now, I didn't like that business model. I didn't like the commercial aspect of it. These are You're building a facility out and you're looking at a two or four year return on investment okay. in a space that's so dynamic and ever changing. We've even seen a lot of these brand new machines as they're being shipped. The coins will ter block these machines by changing the code. Okay, okay. It's, it, they're hardening against these ASIC farms. And the reason a lot of the companies want to harden against ASICs is because it, it results in centralization of these cryptocurrencies. Some guy takes $20 million, buys all the machines, and then he runs the coin. Yeah. He is the coin, essentially. He does all the security practices. He gets all the rewards. He controls all the holdings, or she. So I instead looked at being a, a really big fish in the smaller ponds. And the smaller ponds were things like GPU mining, graphical processor units. Now, these are designed for consumers. Mm -hmm. Most of you at home, I imagine, if you're watching this, probably have a graphics card in your laptop or your computer. And these are designed for doing... Um, visual work and rendering or doing processing and things like Adobe, movie editing, music editing. So they have a much wider scope of application. They can be used for musicians, developers, gamers, VR. The list is literally endless. Just about any computer can can uh, see an advantage from using a GPU. So I decided that what we would do is we would target these smaller coins mm -hmm. and look at it like a... Look at it like a junior Canadian mining operation, okay? So where a lot of these people were throwing money in and buying whatever hardware was the cheapest and just trying to get as, as much going as possible, I looked at most markets similar to cryptocurrency, and I related that to something like the gold market. They, actually, they often only operate for eight months out of four years. 
And the reason for that is they, act, they only operate when the cost of production is less than the value of gold. So the mine's sitting there, the trucks are parked, they've got a whole wait list of people ready to call, and then all of a sudden the value of gold goes up. Okay, we're on. Get everybody warm warm the trucks up. We're going. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then they mine for eight months until the value drops again where their cost of production exceeds the actual value of the gold itself. Mm -hmm. um, now, with larger operations, you can hedge your bet. You can mine and hold. You can sell later. But you no, know, most of these companies look at mining and selling it as a liquid asset, right? So I said, that's not smart. How can you... There's no consistency. There's that's a bad business practice. By coming into an operation like that and focusing on cost, you can reduce your overhead. You can modernize. You can automate. You can go to scale with certain things. And uh, there's a lot of ways to reduce your cost. So I said, if we're going to do this, we want to be able to run all year. We want to be able to live through what what they call bleed out cycles yeah. in these different markets, mm -hmm. where the frivolous the the overspenders, the, the the fat cats, as they say, they start to get pushed out. And this happens as all markets mature. This is a normal cycle in most most uh, industries. You get this pullback and uh, get pushes a lot of players out of the space. So we, we looked at power efficiency as the number one goal. How much hashes, how much coin production can we get per watt of power? And so we tested all the cards and we decided to go with the NVIDIA 1070 Ti's at the time because they were the most efficient power-wise. So they didn't produce the most coins, and they certainly were many times more than some of the less expensive cards. But what happened is throughout the entire bear cycle, we've been profitable. We haven't had to turn off any of our machines. All of our clients at scale have been profitable as well. So, And, and it's easy to step into a market when the market's high to buy Bitcoin when it's at 16,000 and sell it at 20. Mm -hmm. But if you if you can produce even small amounts of Bitcoin throughout the year passively at a profit, basically you trade electricity for coins. If you're making more coins than you are in electricity, amazing. This is passive, in it's a money printer. Mm -hmm. It's literally a money printer. And whereas you like to do investing and trading, mm -hmm. I looked at this like a, a, a risk reward uh, proposition. And I decide if we're gonna put $50,000 in, if, if I'm going to tell these people to take a million bucks out and put $400,000 into this industry, and the, it, and obviously the market's run, obviously it's inflated. It can't go up like that forever. Mm -hmm. We were smart enough to know that in December, it was at the high. And we were smart enough to know that in January, it wasn't going to be able to sustain that that increase in value. It was, it was parabolic. It was nuts. So what is the best way to stay involved in cryptocurrency? while being risk adverse. Well, it's certainly not buying ASICs because those lose their value in about three to four months. Something like an S9 that you buy at $4,000, you're lucky to get $200 for after its productivity is no longer of value to the, the, the coin. Mm -hmm. And that's just because new machines come out with twice the amount of hardware and use less power and better design. It's this ongoing fight. Yeah, You can always resell a video card. You can always resell a motherboard or a processor. Mm -hmm. So you want you want to have a hundred thousand dollars invested in cryptocurrency and see that upside? You ask me. I say put that in hardware, because while the cryptocurrency lost eighty to ninety percent of its value over the last year, hardware has lost maybe at most thirty mm -hmm. percent, and the value they've created in that meantime is well over that loss in value. And if you're and if you're maintaining your overhead on a regular basis, taking 30% of your coins out every month and paying your power, then there's zero downside. Mm -hmm. And when the coins increase in value, if you mine and hold them, you're looking at many times return. So you might be making a few dollars on a card a day right now, but you could sell that literally a year from now and that'll have equated to making $30 per card per day. You can mine a coin. Yeah. And then push that into Bitcoin and yep. like trade it into Bitcoin and just let that grow. And then when Bitcoin pumps, you could just pull that out if you want to. Yeah. And of course, you can talk about trading the floors and ceilings. Mm -hmm. We try to take money out uh, once or twice a month on a regular basis for overhead. We try to do it at the market highs. And I've been yeah. really lucky all year. I've been saying, 
so for this a hundred right right now when Ethereum hits one hundred and sixty, we're pulling out two thousand mm-hmm. dollars. And Spencer and I made this agreement. Next time it hits one sixty, we're pulling some out. And it's tough because anytime you take money out. I know. You you reduce your upside. I know. And we're talking a hundred times value upside yeah. on a lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Thousands of times. Literally some coins in twenty seventeen saw an increase of value, seven coins. Five five major coins saw a value of thirty four thousand percent. So that means if you had one dollar, it became thirty four thousand mm-hmm. dollars. We see it on Binance all the time. There are coins right now. That have pumped better. 150 dollars or 150 percent or 140 yeah. percent in one day. I don't look at crypto buys and any of my stock buys as long term holds, other than my Bitcoin value. So, yeah, to and speak. I would say Ethereum from a technological yeah. standpoint, Th- those two is, but, a, is a long hold. Yeah, but my point being is that I swing trade yeah 90 percent of the time, strictly based on technical analysis. Yeah. If you're going to do technical analysis, A, it's like learning learning how to read charts, essentially, okay? Um, you need to learn that. It's a process. And, and are before, you just looking at charts or are you looking at news announcements? Are both. you looking at conferences? So I have, are you looking at I milestones? Have, yeah, yeah. So I have sources that I regularly go to that are consistent and are kind of like our, our group in the crypto mining circle, um, but for crypto trading. Yep. Okay, so I have... Three, maybe four sources that are super reliable, that them themselves like always have are been giving right. you impact causing you news and it. events. Got you got it. You got right. it. Not just that, but then also breaking down the technical analysis, sort of solidifying my own thoughts. Okay. Okay. And if these people aren't saying the same thing I'm saying, then I don't make that move that I want to make. Or I might risk it. And do the 1% stop loss because I don't care to lose 1%. The reason that we tell people to get into mining specifically mm-hmm. is because there's always exit strategies. You can ins- you can put a computer in your basement or your garage or your spare bedroom or your living room. Keep the house warm. Yeah. And you can put insurance on that. And if it gets stolen, if it gets broken, if it gets busted, if it catches on fire, there's no loss. Mm-hmm. There's no way to lose your money. Yeah. Whereas when you're holding a cryptocurrency... Um, especially when you're leaving those cryptocurrencies in places like exchanges, like Quadriga, which we'll, which talk we'll get about. into. Yeah, but no, but all exchanges, mm-hmm. no exchange is safe. We know this. Yeah, it's the fact of reality. Yeah. Why do you think we go to? We don't toot our horn at our these conferences. We mm-hmm. talk to people about security and the risks associated with that. So having a physical asset that's producing cryptocurrency on a passive instance mm-hmm. is far less risky than leaving money. Or investing now. When I look at coins, I think I think maybe we end up with like three or four, maybe five cryptocurrencies that are used as as wealth stores, uh, store of wealth. Uh, maybe at most, I think the majority of these coins lack application. They lack development cycles. They lack milestones. They lack the teams and even just simple application in industry. I 100% agree. So so to for me. To invest in a coin at all, mm-hmm. because we're so public, because we have such a large network of people that heed our advice, I audit the team. I audit the project. I go through every white paper of every coin I've ever owned, mm-hmm. right? Like 100%. Mm-hmm. Now, we've also been really lucky in this matter because we've we've had only good experiences with our investing and with the places we used to trade. And But for me, it's just too risky to... to, to to tell someone to go buy something with their money because I just, for me, I don't feel comfortable doing that. There's, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, there's, you can, you can, can, there's more ways to reduce your risk. Yeah. Right. You, there's, there's always less re- re- risky manners. And of course, some people want to take the long shot. Some people are very risk oriented mm-hmm. and I think that's great. You're going to see a higher return than I might as my, with my less risky approach. Mm-hmm. The difficulty with cryptocurrency and especially with investing is you are the bank. Mm -hmm. You are 100% responsible. And if you make a mistake or anyone in any of the chain makes a mistake or intentionally takes your money from you, there's no way of fixing it. Not only that, not only is it risky throughout the the layers of uh, businesses and people you associate with to do it, like these exchanges to do the trading, 
the chains themselves are also susceptible to hacking. So someone could get a critical amount of computers on a mining network for X coin and then double spend attack every coin on the network. And you no longer are in possession of your coins. So you could even have your coins in a hardware wallet mm -hmm. and they could still disappear. And there's literally no legal recourse to this. Mm -hmm. Zero. Mm -hmm. And everything gets hacked. Every company, every government body, every computer gets hacked. Mm -hmm. In time, everything is cracked. Yeah. And all of these things that people are doing now, they, they think they're skirting taxes or you know, buying drugs on Silk Road or all the other things. People are doing illegal activities with these cryptocurrencies. It's going to bite them all in the ass. Mm -hmm. It's all going to be audited. And it's the software is going to go back and all these customers are going to be identified and it's all going to be tracked and it's all going to be visual. I totally agree with you 100% on the whole risk and the whole hacking aspect like 100 percent where you choose to put your money whether it be on that exchange or on your hard wallet or whatever it may be and what happens to it is 100 percent on the end user like yeah you are and don't invest not anything you can't afford to lose yet at least maybe down the road if it gets regulated there will be some sort of insurance for that yeah but i doubt it for now seeing as most banks and insurance companies are like well, I, don't I don't know i would disagree i'd say that the five large banks right now yeah uh, are working towards asset management and key holding all five let's quickly talk about all this five. actually jp morgan was telling you not to buy bitcoin and that it was a fraud that was two years ago yeah but you know his, his wait, one of his team members just, bought in two wait, weeks later i'm telling the story alex okay okay <laughs> that was two years ago and on our first podcast that I did, No Fun City was all about Bitcoin. I stated, I said the same fuckers who are telling you not to buy Bitcoin are developing in the background. Literally just bought Bitcoin and a shit ton of it. Not just that, this past month or the past couple months, JP Morgan announced that they are releasing a token, a, a crypto token. Stable token. A backed stable token. Yeah, so it's what is it backed by fiat? Supposedly. Okay, so now they're developing sort of like crypto uh, currency and blockchain. This tech. is blockchain and yeah. in the financial industry. That's yeah. what this is. Okay. So then we had Facebook. Before you could pay Facebook ads with Bitcoin. Banned everything. And then they banned it. They removed it. They, they literally, our crypto company page still yeah. can't promote ads because they still think it as illicit That's activity. Hilarious. So here's what happens. I said... I said, listen, if WhatsApp or WeChat Pay, which is very popular in China, I'm like, if, or PayPal, if those guys start accepting crypto, Ooh, PayPal, just whatever, if those guys start accepting crypto, then it's done. It's here to stay. And what happened? They've all started accepting. Facebook just Facebook announced point. that they're going to be releasing a crypto so that we could exchange money through uh, WhatsApp. Messenger. And people are talking about that literally becoming the new world yeah. currency. So <laughs> you're still not convinced? Fine. This is how I know. This is my certainty that crypto and Bitcoin and all that are here to stay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is how you know for sure. Samsung, back maybe I think it was six months or a year ago actually, announced that they were going to create a processing chip strictly for crypto mining. That was step one. The seven step two... Was recently, they announced that they on their new... They showed it in January of, of 2018. They showed it off yeah. at the Consumer Electronics Conference in Germany. Okay. Yeah. And then... And four just, months later, it was under production. Yeah. And then just recently, they announced that their new Samsung phone is going to come integrated with hardware an wallet. integrated uh, crypto wallet integrated yep. right into the phone. When you buy it, it's already there. Not a good idea, if you ask me, from a security standpoint. F fair, but, but why massive would... adoption is coming. Yeah, why would a company like Samsung, okay? Uh, almost, I think they're now the top leading mobile company in the world, maybe, not including China. Yep. Why would a company like Samsung make that kind of move and then be followed by Intel doing the exact same thing with the processing chip if blockchain's not going anywhere? Do you think Samsung sits there and goes... How are we going to waste our money today, guys? Blockchain is just torrents, but it's secure enough to use money. The, what you're going to see is the technology just taking over everything yeah. because it's distributed computing. 
and it, it gives especially with the internet of things i really feel that fire alarms and doorbells and thermostats are all going to be integrated into the security model okay, i really okay. do yeah that because it makes everything more secure the more the more devices so when it comes to visa you should look at bitcoin as an alternative to visa as the way it functions right now as a currency and with visa as a store owner or as a business, you pay a transaction fee to Visa or Google or Citrus, whoever sets you up with your debit machine. Okay. Yeah. Now that's 1.4% on the low end. It's 4% on the high end from these companies to do this. Okay. Now what they're you're paying for, in a sense, of course, there's a profit model built into the people who sell the machines and commission, residual income, all this kind of stuff. People like to make money. Yeah. So they build fees into the fees. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, that's supposed to pay for the electricity and the server cost to secure those transactions. So I swipe my Visa card. That transaction goes through the internet encrypted to Visa where they unencrypt the transaction. They then run that through their systems and say, okay, the money's transferred. They, mo they move the ledger. It's a public ledger. Yeah. The money goes from one one address to another mm -hmm. now blockchain is essentially allows blockchain the technology allows many things but from a financial alternative it allows you to do that exact same thing without the single point of security so the difficulty with financial transactions being in a single place a single server having a single point of connection mm -hmm. that becomes a target for malicious hackers and for exploitation and for errors and bugs and human error all these things affect that one point of entry really, really badly. And so you see commercial entities, Hacker Team North Korea. You see the shadow brokers and the dark web. These guys target the banks and the credit card companies in those points. And what actually ended up happening in the early 2000s, I don't know if you're familiar with the Cash Boys. No. So a, a hacking group online had uh, infiltrated four of the large ATM networks. And they, they made all these ATMs spit out money. And so they around the world, about $1.2 to like $2 million, it's questionable, was spit out of ATMs. That's crazy. Right. But that's because you've got this single point of security. Yeah. And once those single points were infected, instead of doing the short run, they did the long con. And they waited. And they kept getting more access. And eventually, they... they they were able to take down the whole network of the financial institutions instead of just one or two points. Wow. Now, cryptocurrency is going to suffer from these same things. But the way blockchain currently works, your card or my card is just guessing numbers. 16, 48, 431, 1,206. And eventually, someone's computer somewhere in the world guesses the right number. And the block unlocks. And they get two sorts of payments for that. There's the block reward which is the distribution model from each blockchain. So each coin has its own distribution model. Yeah. For block, for Bitcoin, it's going to reduce to 6.5 Bitcoins per block, mm -hmm. right? And generally it halves over time. It goes from 12 coins to 6 coins to 3 coins to 1.5 coins. Ethereum just reduced its block reward from 3 to 2. Okay. But they also fixed a, 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 a bug on the network that was causing the difficulty to rise. Oh. And the block time got shorter. So instead of 20 seconds, the block time's closer to 13 seconds now. So even though they reduced the block reward, it still became more profitable to mine. Yeah. Because of the frequency increase. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so you're all guessing numbers. And then what you do is you work together. Because you're guessing 1-1, one, 2-2. One, two, two. We're both guessing the same numbers. So by you and I hooking our computers together in a pool... You say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We alternate the guesses. Yeah. And then by hooking the larger pools and grouping together, you can orga do organized guessing. And that r increases your luck factor, essentially. Okay. And that's why you conglomerate these GPU cards together. That's why the farms conglomerate. And that's why most... You could solo mine. You could turn your computer on Bitcoin and try to guess the block. And if you get lucky, dude, you just make like tens of thousands of dollars if you unlock a block you literally yeah. make tens of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. but you could go 99 years and never be lucky enough it's literally a roll of the dice that's how it works yeah so that's where visa and blockchain is different 
instead of it being maintained on one server, it's being maintained on full nodes all over the world. And all of the miners are constantly validating consensus. It's a consensus model. If anyone disagrees or someone changes it, that gets thrown away. And that's where it has its real technological value, is in its ability to distribute that security, right? To distribute that, that computing, to distribute that work and offload it to many entities. And yeah. also at the same time, making it more secure and less centralized. Yeah, so that's, that's blockchain in a nutshell. And that, that's... <laughs> I hope people kept up with that. Yeah, I'm sorry. You, you did. You actually did really well in explaining it, at, like in layman's terms. I try. Oh, I. Yeah. You, you... Yeah. And then the other value. So there's the block reward, and yeah. that halves over time. That's the model of um, distributing the coins. So that's tied to the value of the coins. How many coins are on the market at a time? Mm -hmm. As the coins as get less or harder to mine, generally that increases the value because that inc that increases. Um, uh, um, scarce scarcity. Yeah. Right. So it's really basic metric analytics, and it's pretty normal market forces. It's designed to really follow a scarcity, a a evolving scarcity model. As yeah. it gets more scarce, the ex expectation is the value for these things will go up. The other value that's actually in there is the transaction fees. Okay. Now some some blockchains are not being used close to their full potential. So for for example, Litecoin. Seven, the average of 75% of the Litecoin blocks are empty. Mm -hmm. No transaction fees, no transactions. Okay, because it's a very efficient chain. Yeah. Um, but also there's not as much people using it as something like Bitcoin, which has something closer to 50 to 60% of the market dominance on a regular basis. The transaction fees are like the visa fee that the store owner pays, that 4%. And with blockchain, it's supposed to pay for the electricity and the computing power done by the person who unlocks the block. Mm. and the full node and um, different coins have different models where the people who operate those full nodes also get rewards they're called uncles or full nodes or master nodes these sometimes receive benefits for holding all the gigabytes the full 48 gigabytes of the chain whereas as a miner you're only holding a part of the chain yeah the most most recent part yeah okay so those transaction fees when i send you a bitcoin it's going to cost me 46 cents now during the adoption phase, when CryptoKitties, a game, came out on yeah, Ethereum, yeah. or during some of the Bitcoin runs in December of 2017, January 2018, Bitcoin fees were as much as $15. At some points, they were literally $50 to send any amount of Bitcoin, mm -hmm. right? Because there was the transaction fees went through the roof. The network wasn't operating uh, optimally. And these are technological issues we're encountering as the adoption and scale hits these industries yeah and there's a lot of things we could talk about like crypto 2.0 and crypto 3.0 like the internet internet existed and then they added different layers email tcpi protocol ftps email servers http emails of ftp it all got layered on top of this and that's what we're doing. Like the Lightning Network is what you would call a layer two on Bitcoin. And it's it's intended to reduce the cost of those fees okay. by doing a lot of that work off of blockchain and then serving up a confirmed result to blockchain. Okay. Yeah. So it's so that's that's a layer two solution. The other solutions that technically, technically a lot of people are working towards could be side chains where like Amazon West and Amazon East has a different chain for their warehouse. Mm -hmm. The difficulty is... Visa does does tens of thousands of transactions a second. Most of these blockchains are lucky if they can do 15 or 20 transactions a second. So for inventory management and chain of custody and a lot of these different for scientific research and for a lot of things, if it costs gas and money every time you want to put something on the chain, using it as an index or a ledger or a library or a store of information becomes really expensive really quick. Cryptocurrency 3.0, where ultimately I see it and a lot of the smart people see it going, is sharding, where you end up with a whole bunch of different chains that all maintain each other. So instead of one point, you end up with dozens. So it's like torrentizing. It's like torrenting the management of blockchains. Okay. So it's like distributing, distributing technology. <laughs> God. And it's well, no, no, but no, this, I know, I know. But you. this is where you see literally a million transactions per second on something like Ethereum. Okay. So that the scale is now endless. Endless. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. You could, you could count freaking particles, and it, it could keep up with you. 
So, so such an interesting technological play. It's going to touch our lives in so many ways. That's really how it works. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where the current understanding of value is. Of course, you see really interesting things like Gucci has just been experimenting with blockchain where they use an RF chip in the purse. Yeah, I was going to mention them actually. Yeah. yeah. And what that does is every time it hits certain points on the distribution, when, when Alfonso finishes sewing the purse, he's, he scans it with his badge and it's, a purse gets encrypted on the blockchain and it's, that also gets recorded, Alfonso. And then it goes to Tony. Tony puts it on the truck and then it hits the airport and then it comes to North America and it gets scanned in by Susie in Oak Ridge. And then uh, Tony sells it to you. And then on the receipt, it says now it's yours, right? All this information gets at all those different points through that chain of custody, gets uploaded to that blockchain in a validated way. And now anytime you want to sell me that purse later, I don't need a receipt. I don't need authentic uh, to check it, uh, the authenticity. I just literally tap, tap it with the back of my phone and it pulls up the Gucci blockchain. Yeah. And the only people that theoretically should be able to put things on the Gucci blockchain would be Gucci. Yeah. Right. And so that's a... That's a fr uh, fraud avoidance. That's a chain of custody solution. That's um like certification or sure. certified. Like, yeah, like whatever. I think I think um I think your your medical licenses, like uh, your your CPR or yeah. your your first aid. I think a lot of those things will start to exist on the blockchain as well because it's proven. Just like maybe your your educational degrees will go onto the blockchain because it's validated and it's okay. it's unchangeable. What we do is we do consulting for people in cryptocurrency. Okay. We teach people about how to use wallets. Yeah. We do tuning for scale farms. We come in and we tune 300 computers at once for them. Okay. We do management. We've taken over several farms recently um, where we then operate them for them, introduce better security practices. And you don't have to just trade coins. You don't have to be a programmer to make money in blockchain. That's true. Ryan, yeah. for example, we had He's make, Ryan. Ryan's one of our, so when we started Crypto Kings, yeah. a lot of these, these technologies didn't exist. The risers, the adapters for the cards, the metal racks to hold the, the mining computers on. Mm -hmm. We were still using normal computer towers and we had cards all along the top of it and on the table in front of it. <laughs> so we, we became very innovative. Yeah. So we reached out to the people around us and they found work in blockchain. We created probably a dozen different jobs for people all around our business. That's and that's stuff like um, building computer racks and shelves. So Ryan would go get two by fours, strip them all down, turn them into these these racks, which you see at a lot of our farms. Our first three hundred thousand dollars of machines we sold were on his racks that he built for us. Oh, nice! And now we can get the racks from China for sixty bucks, mm -hmm. like shipped to us two days on Amazon. Yeah, the industry matured, totally. and those things became available. And I he what he did is he was using that money to reinvest into mining equipment and into coins. Yeah. What a healthy approach. You can never hurt your family if you approach investing like this. That's and, true. And so for as we look at this as a business. There's there's a hundred ways to make money in blockchain. You don't have to be a programmer. You don't have to be a technical analysis. You don't have to sit in front of a six screens reading a computer all day. You don't have to take yeah. other people's words for it. Totally. There's so many aspects of this industry right now that are just desperate for services and for um, uh, software. Right? You can just simply build a company around educational resources on blockchain. And if anybody enjoys this podcast enough where they want to send me some cryptocurrency, I will be putting my Ethereum and Bitcoin wallet as address you as you down should. below. And remember, that's all going to be tracked in the future. I love, yeah. I send five, ten bucks yeah. to YouTubers and right. podcasts all the time. Because yeah. I know every time we get some money, it blows me away. One of the things that we've been really lucky at is at the, we produced a Bitcoin class and a blockchain class. We produced a ton of educational outreach, a ton of really informative content for people. And we were going to put that all behind a paywall. Yeah. It was a lot of research. One of the things that I'm still doing is like 10 hours of research every friggin' day in this friggin' industry. Yeah. Every day I'm, I'm learning new technologies. And until new exploits and new vulnerabilities and new hacks are shown currently right now using a hardware wallet to store your funds is almost bulletproof it's probably the best option but if you're trading and if you're engaging in commerce and you're selling things online if you're if you're forward-facing like me you're getting donations all of that information is out there in the public we're being audited right now and okay. i had to give all my bitcoin wallets and ethereum wallets to the canadian government the cra yeah. and I, i'm okay with this because we, we pay our taxes 
And I yeah. strongly encourage anyone who does this stuff, we fucked up and we didn't account for everything until later. Mm-hmm. And it's been like two months of going backwards now and like okay. trying to connect all the invoices and linking all the sales together because we, we kept all our tax money. We just didn't keep proper records. Yeah. So please keep your records. There's a lot of really neat tools now that will let you do that. So speaking of really bad, we're going to get into uh, Ooh. an exchange that went down that everybody has been messaging me about left, right, and center. Okay, so here's what happened with Quadriga, on, on my end at least. Essentially, in, I believe it was May or June of last year, um, I had a bunch of money that I had converted from Bitcoin to Canadian dollars. And I uh, was moving that money from the platform to my bank account. Now, usually this process takes three to five business days. Three to five business days passed. Uh, no money arrived in my bank account. Oh, two weeks passed. No money arrived in my bank account. After some phishing and some customer service requests and all that jazz, still no money, no contact from Quadriga. One month passed and finally that money arrives in my bank account. Um, and at that point I was like, okay, I'm not ever putting money in or out of Quadriga ever again. Fast forward to about a couple weeks ago. Um, or I guess not a couple weeks ago. It was like a month ago. People started having issues December 14th with withdrawals. Yeah. So Quadriga essentially goes under because the Canadian government as well as, and this is the Supreme Court of Canada, as well as CIBC essentially... Seize their assets. Seize their assets, lock their funds because people weren't getting their money and a bunch of stuff was going on. At the same time that all this happens, randomly, the CEO of the company apparently dies. Which had been dead for two weeks before they reported it. Apparently. Now, apparent death. Nobody still, in my opinion... Believes it. Believes it or really knows. And the reason for this is because the death certificate came out of India. That's, That's not the real reason. I'll get into the real reason why it's very unlikely that he's actually Is it because the money was being pulled out of the It's not just the money. There's many reasons. Okay. So long story short, no one believes that this guy is really dead. The Canadian government and the Supreme Court of uh, Canada accountant are involved. involved, And they are now looking at, I think they have $22 million of the however many million. I thought they were only able to get $249,000. From my understanding, uh, from the bank I read account, something about twenty-two, 22 million. million is how much money of investors is currently missing. Oh, okay. So I thought twenty-two million was what they recovered, no, and it no, was no. like much higher. No, than no, that. no. They've only got two hundred and forty-nine thousand from from the bank accounts. Okay, locked up, and currently owing twenty-two million. And now this is why I tell people to make sure, like you know, if if you're talking to me and you're connecting with me about Bitcoin and stuff stay up to date with me because what will happen is that I will know what's going on with Quadriga and I will stop using them, but I don't know you're using them. We told a lot of our, we, we had a couple clients lose money. Yeah. Um, some to the tune of 20,000 plus. Yeah. I told, because they're not reading this chat that you're involved in. Yeah. And I told, I told everybody that I knew that was on that platform. Now, stop using it. Now let me give you a different perspective. Go for it. Okay. Yeah. This is why I say auditing. Any aspects of these people are very important. Yeah. Because before we ever used Quadriga, a year and a half ago, almost two years ago now, I audited their company. Yes. And it came up with nothing but red flags. The physical location where they were registered was yeah. only there <clears throat> temporarily at best. It was basically one of those little off the side offices in Richmond. You see all those little commercial office buildings. Yeah. And there was nothing there. Yeah. People called them out about this on Reddit, and they talked about how well they it was for security. They didn't want a location, okay. But more importantly, I didn't even get that far. We got into all the wallets, and I can tell you exactly when they set up to start scam exiting, and I can tell you exactly where all the money went because it's public ledger, my guy. Michael Patron, one of the co-founders of yeah, Quadriga. yeah, I know you're talking. He's not a real. That's not his real name. Yeah, yeah, isn't it like the Omar? Yeah, brown dude. Now we know Omar. From shadow brokers. We know Omar from the dark web. I know Omar from his Midas gold scams. I know Omar from credit card fraud mm-hmm. and customer identity fraud on the dark web. I, I see him in the chat rooms. I know him from the conferences. He is a dirt ball. And He's he a went dirt to prison. He went to jail. On several different occasions. Yeah. 
including the Midas Gold stuff, including the other Ponzi scheme stuff, yeah. including identity fraud. So he's done jail time for these things. So for me, red flag. That's it. Yeah. We put our hands up. Nice hash was the same way. Uh, nice hash. We did the investigation in them. Nice hash is a one click miner that a lot of uh, low level miners use. I make fun of anyone who uses Nice hash, both because it's not as profitable, but also because it's a criminal organization. Yeah. Their CTO, the head of technology there, had just spent four years in jail. He just got out of jail for malware sales online. Okay. Like he literally was four months out of jail when uh -huh. they started Nice hash for identity fraud and theft. And you're sending these people your bank accounts and your driver's license and your home address and your personal email addresses and your passwords that you might use for all your other accounts and all these other things. Yeah. How fucking scary is that? What was happening as of April 14th of 2018 is when money and coins would come into the company, they were sending them to places like Shapeshifter. Okay. And Shapeshifter charges an exorbitant fee to essentially do what's called money washing. So it's called tumbling. Yeah. And this is like it's like money laundering. It's a money yeah. laund it's a digital money laundering service. Okay. The only reason you would use Shapeshift is to convert one coin into another coin in a way that makes it untraceable. Okay. At a time they were trying to provide like a currency conversion solution, but really the only people that use it or money laundering yeah. and trying to wash stolen coins. Okay. So what they they realized that was their market, so they increased their fee quite a bit. Okay. Because the demand wasn't from average day users. Totally. They can, you can now trade on the exchanges yeah. within the apps, yeah, right? Yeah. You can the trading pairs. You can trade Bitcoin to just about any coin now. Yeah. Or even things like Ethereum to Ripple or Litecoin to Ripple. You can, yeah. So. They were sending all the money that came in were going to several different exchanges and places like Shapeshifter to convert the money. At that point, they never ever had 100 Bitcoins in their wallets. There was never 100 Bitcoins. Okay. There was never the accountable money. So unless there's cold storage wallets that haven't been connected, I can't, I can't audit anything that exists. It's all bullshit. And some other really interesting things that have happened since it. So in the two years prior to his quote unquote death, Back in December? Yeah. Okay. His wife has changed their name three times. Okay. She owns 14 homes in Canada under three different declared names, all in two years. And you have to declare a name change, so it has to go in the paper and things. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. This is the Canadian way to change. So, so like 11 of the homes, or seven of them are at Nova Scotia, the East Coast. Okay. So why would you change your name three times in a year? And why would you want to own property under all those different names? So there's also cash just sitting around in bank accounts that's under her control now that she can use essentially for anything she wants. Um, not only that, but this whole dying from dysentery, the Crohn's disease he died from, it's like a 2%, 1% death rate. Um, so it's very abnormal that anyone would die from this. Of course, there's inconsistencies in the death certificate. The name was actually spelt wrong on it. Uh, the part of India where it happened, he was well known. It's a well known place for, for, for faking deaths and doing identity fraud in this nature. Um, and also, you have to appreciate that his partner was involved with identity fraud and theft, co founder of the business, and still is to this day heavily involved in this industry. So it's almost like they were being coached for a very long time how to accumulate all these assets, yeah, get this get money out. out of the cummy, yeah. and then disappear. Do you think suggesting to average users to leave money on exchanges is a good idea? I'm not suggesting anything to an average user. Do you think I'm that... not suggesting anything to anybody. <laughs> okay. Let me be clear on that. What I do is on me, right? Yeah. Uh, you do whatever you want. You well, do whatever I you want. I right? strongly suggest, so after working with that. hundreds of clients in the space, and hearing them speak to me the yeah. exact same way, yeah. about how confident and secure and all of their practices are. Mm. And then it all disappears overnight. Poof. Dude, I understand that risk. Right. Though, so for right? me, I say, yeah. leave your money in hardware wallets yeah. unless you're trading. Yeah. That's, it, dude. For the majority of people. Yeah. That's exactly what I do. So yeah. I have my hard wallet, yeah. right? And I have my exchange. online exchange. But you, ha you can't have to leave so, money in exchanges to do buy and sell orders. So that's this so this is what I was going to get into. So people are probably wondering, well, Mayer, if you have a hard like a wallet, why would you put, leave it on the exchange? 
Because, ugh. yeah. <laughs> well, here's why. Because on the exchange, I could preset a buy order and a sell order. Meaning I could say, hey, I want to buy Bitcoin at this price. Let's say the price I want to buy is $3,000. And Bitcoin is right now at $4,000. I don't know when Bitcoin's going to hit $3,000. It could be tomorrow. It could be two weeks from now. Mm-hmm. But I would really like it. If it was for, automated. If it was automated. So if it just bought it at that price when I claimed it. Now, in order for that to happen, I have to have that amount of Bitcoin or that amount of cash on the platform already there because it's going to hold it. It's going to say, okay, we're taking this, we're putting it on a hold, and it's going to sit here. And as soon as it hits that price, we're buying and what's or we're the rule? We, mu- we have to treat all of that money like it's as good as gone in the first place. Yes. Okay, go. But <laughs> right. as long as you have that, yeah, uh, yeah. then you can't ever get burned, essentially. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and then I sell it, set a stop loss so that if it goes below a 2% rate of what I want to buy at or whatever, it just it sells it. When I say that you have to treat all money in cryptocurrency like it's already gone, it's because there is no legal recourse to they could just close shop tomorrow and keep everything. Yeah. The chances that you're ever going to get your money back are slim to nil at best. Yeah. I just I have to keep no, emphasizing. I this. dude, I agree with you. Yo, in some cases luck out in the sense for example, Binance, which is one of the higher we More like well Binance. prestigious platforms. Um, really, like it's probably one of the top used ones, if not the top three. It's the, it's the number one exchange. Number one, there you go. Number yeah. one exchange. Um, as far as volume. Binance got hacked, I think maybe more than once. But every time Binance has been hacked, they have out of their own pocket paid the people who lost dollars. So if some coin got hacked, I think it was Nemcoin. Nem, they, Nem. They, there was a smart contract exploit yeah. that allowed double spending. So essentially, you would you would send the coin and then buy the the token, yeah. but then you would keep receiving the token for that value. It was a double okay. spend. It it was called a, a recall attack. Okay, and so it just kept recalling, and they were able to essentially take all of the Nem that way. Yeah. And then they were able to reverse that and get a whole bunch of Ethereum and one other coin out using the same technique. Yeah. So what happened in that case, um, Binance did return funds to all the people who lost their NEM coin or whatever it was. So, But but, but hold on. Point, wait, let's, let's, point being is that if you do keep your money on exchange, right, make sure you do it with an exchange that will at least or has a track record of even if they're, they've been hacked – has a track record of uh, sort of insuring but their customers. At best, yeah. that's a pipe dream. Keep that also in mind. Totally. Right. But Certainly those saying, are the better ones to go with. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. But that's, let, that's my but point. But we could talk yeah. about some of Binance's business practices, mm-hmm. which give me the friggin' heebie-jeebies out like no other. Okay. So let's talk about the getting listed on Binance. Okay. So you got a brand new coin, you want to get listed on Binance. They have all, no, admitted that the conversation goes... Well, what do you got? Mm-hmm. How much? How much? Mm-hmm. How much you want to pay me? Well, yeah, of course. There's no standardization to that. That money, oh. that money was being was a slush fund. Okay. They were getting as much as millions of dollars to get listed. Yeah, get your coin on Binance. I don't see a problem with that. Well, no. I what really there don't. should be, <laughs> if if this is if this is a uh, if this is a a true entity, if this yeah. is a if this is a legitimate entity, mm-hmm. if this is accountable, if this is something that they want to be sustainable. That type of from the hip, quick, loose bullshit doesn't fly for very long. It's the same reason Bitmain is going under. It's ultimately to your own detriment by by being quick and loose. Mm. And so they were having these conversations with people. Okay, so so how much? Well, no, how much? And then they would just ignore people if it wasn't enough in their mind. So well, yeah, dude, I would do the same thing. So, wait, it no should offense. be well, yeah, but that's not how I would do it. And, I, I and know. my business practices are far more sustainable than theirs in that I, same I get manner. it. So, so yeah. hold on. It gets okay. far worse. Okay. So Binance gets called on this publicly. Yeah. People start exposing these conversations. Mm-hmm. People start re- recording these engagements with these reps. It yeah. all becomes public. These conversations come out. Okay. And it's fucking shady as hell. Like sh- it's shady business practices at best. I wouldn't call it's, that it's, shady. It's I like it's like the Turkish. Business. It's like the Turkish merchant I met when I was in uh, Istanbul. Dude, exactly. The rug <laughs> sell, sold for three different prices to exactly. three different people. It's the same fuck. Exactly. Yes, but 
But in a market where you have high turnover, yeah, and you're not going to see your business again, yeah, game theory applies. Sure, take the edge, and that's what they're doing. They're taking the edge. Yeah. But these are not one-time people they're engaging with. If if you look at game theory and apply that to their business practices, they're failing the game theory test because what they're doing is is they're burning those relationships out the gate. They're okay. they're they're taking advantage of people. Step one, right? Yeah. As much as they I can take advantage of that taking advantage by, by, of people, by, man. by taking as much money no. as they can. Yeah. Okay, hold on, hold on. Because look, I'm an exchange. You got a coin. Dude, I'm the number one top so exchange me. in the world. Yeah, so ask me how okay. that works. Well, there's fees associated with listing it. And there's marketing that we need to do associated with it. Yeah. And there's changes we need to make to our website and back end. So okay. that's where my fee would come from. It's not a, hey, how much you got. Yeah, but if that's the bullshit. Way, if you look, it's bullshit to you. But no, if, no, no, if no. The, way, the whole world called it bullshit. No, fair. The expos, the exposés hit. Off of, uh, the exposés hit. I don't even. I'm and so even they changed their business either. policies because yeah. it's bullshit and yeah. because it was reflecting badly on their business practices. Okay, fair. So, so what happens? No, so they on. made good. No, is what you're saying. this is where it gets much worse. Okay, go for it. This is where it gets real sinister. Okay, this is where that that questionable business practice yeah. turns into fraud and criminal activity. Okay, let's hear it. So for public image, to restore their image, they say, we're investing all of this coin listing money yeah. into a charity. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So this is, so you can have your opinion. Yeah. The, Wait, this is fact, right? This you is have, fact. have like sources. Yes. Will, okay. No, no. This is public news. This yeah. is, this is all listed. Okay. okay? Yeah. So you have your opinion. Yeah. But understand, the industry at large disagrees. Yeah. So much so mm -hmm. that they had to go into critical emergency recovery mode yeah. and literally eliminate this channel of revenue, which you think is completely reasonable mm -hmm. and I think is complete bullshit. So then they hire this sketchy ass woman who's actually been charged criminally for fraud from charities. Mm -hmm. She's not allowed to operate charities in several different countries now. Yeah. Because she, the countries have closed because of all the fraud associated with it. Okay. So all this money that's now going into this charity fund is going to these incredibly sketchy charities that are getting shut down left, right, and center as I'm speaking with you okay. for, for illegal activities with the funds. So what's actually happening is all this charity money is being funneled into more slush funds. So, so yes, there is sketchy business practices. There is fraud. There is manipulation. There's exploitation of charities going on. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is as China hustle as the China hustle can be. Yeah, and the people involved are shady, shady characters. She doesn't pass the smell test. Mm -hmm. The other guy running the foundation doesn't smash, pass the smell test. Now you're hearing this from me first. Okay. Yeah. You will hear about this throughout the news all month. Okay. You will hear about the charities being shut down. You will hear about the question, the questionability of where these funds are actually going, mm -hmm. and 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 how how bad this actually is getting. Yeah. Okay. Now, I think that this could be the nail in the coffin. I think that this is like Bitmain. I think that these business practices can't be sustained. I think that this type of behavior in the market, it's great if you're game theory. Mm -hmm. It's great if you're the merchant selling rugs to the tour bus from Japan in Istanbul. Because you're never going to see those guys again. But yeah. if you want to maintain relationships both with people in this industry and the people who you're directly working with, you can't. You can't. When people, you can't I understand go, eh, where you're coming eh. from. I understand where you're coming from. But when something's new, when it's a new business, and when we're looking to make a profit, yeah, how much you got? I mentioned earlier that we wrote all those classes and did all the educational content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did the premium signals. We have the chat groups, all the yeah, different yeah, yeah. clubs. Yeah. We were going to put all that behind a paywall. Uh -huh. But the only other people that were doing that at the time were these hype boys, these coin shellers, these yeah, ICO yeah. guys. Yeah. How many of them are still around right now? Not many. Not many. Yeah. Literally all of them are gone. Yeah. If they were, yeah, buy this coin, buy this coin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy into this ICO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's my affiliate links. I was smart enough to look at those business practices mm -hmm. and see that they were toxic. Yeah. And they were unsustainable. So yeah. what did we do? We sent all our information and videos for free of course we did all that outreach for free yeah now all the old timers all the dinosaurs around me are going you're literally field you're giving out advice every day for free companies in brazil are calling me for blockchain perspectives all sorts of wild shit mm. everybody gets one free 
Now, that has led to the sustainability and goodwill of our company. Yeah. There, there's no one walking around talking about the shady business practices of the crypto. Case. Yeah, look, I'm not, I'm not even debating that. Okay, that that's the same model that uh, Gary Vaynerchuk follows. That's the same model. A lot of people follow that freemium model, right? Even apps follow a model like that. Sure. Where we'll give you the product, and if well, you the want exchange to buy- is free. It's a freemium model. Yeah, yeah. So. So that's just a form of business so practice. What you're but saying my is, point no, no. is that what you're saying is them, that's okay. You're okay with the companies you're putting your money it's into. It's their company. That's yeah, the thing. I'm not okay you with that. It. Yeah, okay. You don't have to be, and I don't have to be. If a company has a model where they're the one of the top exchange, if not as we said, the top exchange in the world, okay. And you want to be part of their platform and their response to you is, well, how much money you got? So, sounds no like, offense. Sounds like antitrust. Sounds they like got, monopolization. No, they, I could make they got a long the right with- to, it Sounds like success. Sounds like you've reached a point where like you don't now, you're not, and then you don't the, need the coin. The coin needs you. Do you well, understand what I'm saying? I understand. Right. But then the whole industry backlashes against them. They backtrack on this behavior. So clearly the industry at large disagrees with your perspective. You're, and you're then right on, on they get that. caught up in a yeah. scandal where they're stealing money from charities yeah. as a solution to the backlash to the poor business practices they were using. It's, it's all red flags to me. I, I cannot see how you, you can maintain a good opinion about a business that's behaving this I'm way. I'm not saying that it's a good opinion. What I'm saying is if a business chooses to run that way and like Microsoft one, did with Office. Yeah, and they're number one And in then what the they Supreme do, Courts took them okay. down, hit them with an antitrust monopolization cool, but lawsuit. But that's regulated. Split right? up the company. That's, that's all through regulate so my this is it was to my do point. you think binance will survive regulation yes. regulations coming yeah i, I don't do. think they will i think they have enough bitmain didn't they, survive they regulation can. that's why they fell apart Bitmain had ma- massive issues though binance dude you gotta Fraud understand we are talking we are talking about a things. platform that has so, given away lamborghinis on their website when okay? when you called binance yeah. and asked them you wanted to develop or bitmain and you wanted to develop an asic what do you how do you think the conversation over there went I don't know. Well, That's what do you somebody. got? How much you got? Sure. Sure. Yeah. And what happened to Bitme? Yeah, dude, I, as you said, things changed. Right? What I'm seeing is the nails in the coffin for mm-hmm. Binance. I'm seeing more and more negative news, which is I can audit and confirm is true. Yeah. I'm seeing more scandals and yeah. I'm seeing more people every day exposing those guys in that company for for – at the worst, or at the best way to put it, is poor business practices. That's the nicest way to put it. Essentially, the decentralized exchanges will do away with all of this bullshit, all of these fees for listing, and all of these charity organizations and coins. Like it's it's been proven that a lot of these exchanges were just printing tether that wasn't backed. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of exchanges that keep a dollar in the bank for every dollar in cryptocurrency that you're holding. Yeah. They've got a dollar in fiat. Mm-hmm. It's fully audible. It's like these stable coins. If you can't show that you have the money, then how can you say that it's backed? It's complete bullshit. Mm. It, it's 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 as it's as transparent as hiring an auditor to come in and look at the statements and put their thumb up. And Tether has failed that every single time, both from the feds and privately. And external audits. Mm-hmm. Okay? It's not Tether has said that they have investments in other things like coins and exchange. All it's all what they're saying is they don't have the cash on hand yeah. to cover this stuff. Mm-hmm. So when you've got companies like Binance doing the BNB coin mm-hmm. and doing Tether and being producers of it, mm-hmm. and now they're going to the IEO, which is the initial exchange offering, mm-hmm. which is the ICO model, but instead of needing an Ethereum token, it's all done through the exchange. Okay. Now the hope is the exchange audits and validates the application and industry and, and and audits the team and makes sure all these team members aren't fraudulent. But I can promise you, when it's about how much money you got over at Binance, they're not going to be doing proper audits on IEOs. They're not concerned about you losing your money. Mm-hmm. They're concerned about putting money in their own pocket. Yeah, I would assume so. Sure, I'm not. De- I'm not uh, denying anything you're saying. So this IEO saying- thing scares the shit out of me too, because it's it's the same as the Greek bankers. Yeah, it's so sketchy. It's it is the polar opposite of what blockchain and decentralized currency is supposed to be about. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to have a financial value and a merit and an application. 
Bitcoin only works because you can buy a house with Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah, because yeah. you can send it to dozens of different places and they will deposit cash into your bank account. Yeah. That's what makes Bitcoin work. Mm -hmm. Okay? When you're when you use these IEOs, when you use these Binance coins, mm -hmm. when you use these other things, you're then centralizing the distribution model. You can only go to one guy to get your money back. You follow me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it only makes sense for an exchange that big to want to have their own coin. Yes, it makes sense to and it lowers steal the and transaction cheat fees. and take charity money and... Yeah, you keep bringing that... Okay, the charity money okay and that still because here's here's what i see and here's why okay i'll tell you why literally they're way out of the industry's <laughs> let perspective me explain. was to let steal me explain. charity money let me explain that shows right there their interest in a in an industry that's not regulated yet dude the same could be said for the internet back in 19 it's a wild west yes yeah so yes, what do still you expect one. right like people are making their shit up as they go and then when things as things not get the places regulated and, and if, you know there are loopholes in laws and 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 things that they're working around that's probably the whole charity thing that you bring about is probably 100 percent in my opinion a loophole law for their tax but you have to appreciate the motivation behind that good it's, instead of doing good yeah instead of taking all these people's money that mm -hmm. we're using bad business practice, that the industry is looking negatively at. Yeah. Instead of turning it into a good guy biker moment and yeah. creating real goodwill for your company yeah. and creating real goodwill for the industry, yeah. it becomes another headline on CNBC about how the largest entity in blockchain is stealing people's money and stealing charity's money. I, it is toxic I hear you. to everything about the industry. I hear you, but my side of it is that this is all fucking new. And these people are doing what they think is... Oh, they can get away with. Yeah, yeah. It's no, like you and I are but talking... But that's two perspectives. Just, you and I are talking and it's like, dude, we're going to have to give up like uh, $25 million to our taxes or whatever. And then you say, yeah, except look what I found. There's this loophole thing here sure. that says if we give it up to a charity and blah, 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 we get to keep three quarters of it. And... It says the charity could be owned by our own company or whatever. Right? Like I don't, I don't know the logistics of the laws well, of what they. That you know what is I mean? certainly pretty far from do you, how it's, do you know it works. Do I mean though? Like, but yes, they, and, and they, in they an unregulated, yeah, in an unregulated situation, I can't assume that what they were doing was based on purely um, personal but, illegitimate but, satisfaction as opposed to. Uh, business practice that might end up saving the money and it's a loophole and it works. They're setting up this whole business in a way of laundering money. It's an entire, it's the, it's the, it's the motivation behind the practice. Mm -hmm. It's the intent, not, it's not, yes, of course, it's the wild west, make all your money. Mm -hmm. And that's going to happen in the business industry too. Mm -hmm. Those shady behaviors, those questionable characters, as regulation comes into the industry, as mass adoption comes in, as more traditional forces, as the big banks, and as Facebook, and as Fidelity, and all these other large entities move into the industry, all those people behaving that way, are going to get pushed out into the woods by themselves. They're, I don't deny that. There's not going to be any room for them. In, I don't. In the I don't deny that, and I think that just comes with regulations. Sure. So, so of course, and, and that is my entire point: is that you are under the uh, vision of reg regulatory system. You know, regulated everything. Is structured, I think. Everything let me is be ready, clear. I think fun. it will become more regulated yeah. before we reach true decentralization. Okay, because yeah. people can't be their own bankers because yeah. there's too much fraud because there's people stealing from charities. Yeah. Once this all gets t um, smoothed out, once you can go somewhere with your passport and get your coins back, yeah. this is when it will become fully decentralized. The tools, the, ma the industry, the maturity, the accountability, the technology will be mature enough that that risk can be passed down to the individual. Yeah. But before we hit that, we will see far more centralization. Instead of Cryptopia and Quadriga and Binance, stupid fucking spaceship names. Mm -hmm. What kind of, you think my dad wants to buy into Cryptopia? It no. sounds, it's, no. <laughs> he wants to buy into Brinks Asset are, Management or yeah. Lehman Brothers Firm and Investing yeah. or like this, for real. Yeah, yeah. And so you'll see 
a lot of these things become more traditional in their naming yeah. and in their policies and practices. And the traditional banks scare the shit out of me. They're mm -hmm. worse than stealing money from charity. They literally pay the lobbyists to make all these loopholes so they, they can take all this money. Mm -hmm. What Google does, not paying a single dollar in taxes, what Apple does, is 100% legal. It's only legal because they spent hundreds of millions of dollars lobbying local governments and different bodies to change the laws so they yeah. can get away with this stuff. Mm -hmm. And those things are set up so that the has and the learned can use those advantages. Yeah. It's designed so that you got to have a certain legal understanding to access these f loopholes. Totally. It's designed that way. Yeah. So that everybody else gets fucked. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So I'm not saying that the centralization is going to be a good thing either. It's going to be real sketchy. But it's going to result in a lot more adoption. Okay? Yeah. Totally. And through that, that through that process, a lot of these guys are going to disappear. A lot I of these players are going to get pushed out. I think beyond exchanges, mainly coins are going to disappear. And if you ask me, players like Ethereum are yeah. going to be around. Yeah. And players like Tron, whose Tron has been far outside of the medium for Bitcoin. Tron, Ripple, and the BitTorrent ICO and all these other ones that yeah. came out, they're far making far more gains than bitcoin currently in the spare market in fact that being said let's transition into that into okay. our uh coins of choice is what i like to call ah. it and wait before i say anything what we're gonna say is not uh here for you to listen and go this throw is, your money this is into. not legal financial advice no not at all we are not registered no. financial these advisors. are what we call all our predictions of the game players who will more than likely do best in the future. And what we'll um, cover is like sort of the main coins, so Bitcoin, Ethereum, yeah. and then onwards to uh, those subcoins and altcoins of choice. And you can even include tokens like you brought up uh, BitTorrent token, which mm -hmm. let's start with that because I completely agree with you. And this is why I loved BNB. To me, uh, BitTorrent token is last year's BNB or this year's BNB meaning yes. what bit or Binance coin was last year to the to the market perspectively yeah, yeah, yeah. not is, application is what BitTorrent token is today that being said so the reason why I like uh, BitTorrent token is one its users aren't going anywhere right uh, they have a huge following people use BitTorrent in general all the time uh, but the main reason is because the person who bought BitTorrent is the same guy who owns Tron, right? Justin Sun. Yeah. Who I think is a goofy douchebag. He is. But he has a lot of capital. And that capital, like, yes, he does. you, you got to understand. for And he has a huge platform. Yeah. And you got to understand, this isn't a guy who's going to uh, buy a business or buy a coin or release something and have it just go to nothing. Right. This is a guy who, if this uses coin, hype and bullshit and partners with everybody in and the has entire... money, has shit ton of money. Let's talk application. Okay. So the BitTorrent coin, yeah, is essentially designed to pay people for something that people have been doing for free forever. Yeah. Okay. Which is sharing files. Yeah. Now, most of those files, would you consider them to be legal or illegal files? Illegal. So, so let's just step back here. Yeah. From a macro business perspective, if you yeah. go to a bank, mm -hmm. say, so your comp what's your company do? Oh, we pay people to share copyright infringing and stolen property. You can't say that though. But it's, it's you okay, can't. listen, that's the reality. That's the, you can look at it any other way, yeah. but the real life application and the real life, app, how I get it's what really you're being used. Yeah. When you reduce it to what's actually going on. They're paying if you're people. You're reducing it to ninety percent of what's going on. Sure, is what I'll say. Far more yeah. than ninety percent of to token or Let, bit, let's, bit torrent. Let's even say ninety nine percent. Sure, but you still have to give um, the credence that one percent. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but do you think that there's going to be traditional bodies outside the yeah. people who have the business and financial understanding and the experience? Yeah. You think they're going to be able to attract uh, educated and long facing CEOs? and administrative staff yeah. when you can reduce the business application to paying people for sharing stolen content i don't know man it doesn't i'm not listen i told you i'm not married to any given coin i'm not here to be like 
the application of BitTorrent token is it's gonna be the future. Fuck Bitcoin, blah blah. I'm not saying any of that ever to any coin. And I'm I am, always saying that. Yeah, and that's that's our that's where you and I differ because right. I'm in it for essentially the swings and the trades. I'm and not I'm in it, it for informing you're in it people. For, exactly. You're in it for the application. Yeah. Okay? And, and and keeping yeah. mass adoption healthy. Yeah, I'm in it to make money. Like I'm essentially in when it you're to make making money. money. Yeah, someone's losing money. Fair. That's how it fair. works. That's how yeah, it works. That's fair. That's right? 100 percent fair. Right. Yeah. So the difficulty is, if you're not doing anything mm-hmm. to usher in more acceptance, more yeah. knowledge, what you are, this podcast is a is a prime example of where you can offset your financial gains. By putting value back in the community. Yeah. Because let's be serious. We've both taken a lot of money from stupid people. People yeah. buy in at the highs and get exhausted and sell them at the lows. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Or people are using their life finances. They're mortgaging their homes. You read about – you hear about these people on Twitter. Yeah, I mortgaged $270,000 yeah. against my house. Well, that is – bullshit business practices mm-hmm. that's not thinking properly yeah because we do all these services and then reinvest that money because we take our time and our knowledge and our our information and bring that back in we're, we're at no loss yeah right so and yeah it's just there's a for me yeah it's all about the tech it's all that that's where the longest winners are going to be mm-hmm. is the people who focus and you don't have to hold coins you yeah. can invest in companies working out on blockchain. Yeah, you could start a service business around blockchain. Yeah, you there's you can leverage an emerging industry in more ways than you and I can even conceive in a year's time. There's because the the possibilities are endless. I hear you. Right. Yeah. Just like the the things that the internet has done to society and industry and education and finances and economics and uh, tourism and world trade and all these other things for just quality of life and safety and uh, stability worldwide has gone up because of the internet because everything is now exposed right so everything has exposure and we get to have that global consensus on if something's good or not i will say i will never go into icos so never ask me about an ico because i'll just say no to all yeah. of them or what about these ieos um, these exchanges yeah yeah all, Same all, thing. anything that's an i and an o and <laughs> so sto yeah the, taking St- an apple stock and tokenizing it on ethereum and then selling those assets so Ooh, you as someone in iran <laughs> yeah can't own Apple stocks in America yeah, yeah, yeah. because you can't invest more yeah, than $5,000 because of the regulatory measures. You have yeah. to be able to show that income for five years yeah. before you can invest into a lot of these things. Totally. So an STO allows you to buy into real estate or stocks or equity without having, having to that. be validated. Totally. But of course, it takes all the regulation away as well. Yeah. So it just tit for tat. <laughs> but okay, so... So, so there's no STO, no yeah, IEO, no ICO. No ICO. No ICO. Okay, None except of the for BitTorrent. BitTorrent was yeah. an ICO. BitTorrent, yeah, because it's still a token. The difference between why I went into BitTorrent token, right, and none of these other ICOs and all that jazz, is because BitTorrent token is officially a now on Binance too, right? Like it's on a platform just like Skycoin, yes. which is rare, right? We don't see many actual tokens on there until they're actually ready to go it's mainnet. Really flushed out. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, with, Which again yeah. is another red flag for me uh-huh. when I see Binance working closely with Justin Sun, uh-huh. introducing these IEOs yeah. and these ICOs, mm-hmm. and and their relationship. When I see Binance relationship growing with the sketchiest players in the space <laughs> to release these sketchily speculative, unregulated STOs, ICOs, yeah. and IEOs, that's what I see is Binance getting in bed with those shady characters more and more every time. Mm-hmm on a regular basis and Justin Sun is a prime example of that okay because they're working they're working they're bed buddies all over the place now yeah. you see them at the conferences talking to each other they're I, being I, interviewed I, all the time yeah, of course. they're shutting each other up on Twitter totally Justin Sun just shit all over F and it got retweeted by Binance when everybody knows that's monkey bullshit yeah, yeah. Tech, tech wise I hear you so okay so that being said I'm I'm in on on uh, BTT and you're up BitTorrent token. I'm up. So why didn't you yeah. sell? Because I wanted to go higher. Looking at the token the way it is right mm-hmm. now, it's it's deviated outside of the standard market mm-hmm. 
by many deviations. Okay. By multiple deviations. Mm -hmm. It's seeing opposite behavior of the regular market. Mm -hmm. So I don't see it going up much Maybe more, higher. if any. Yeah. I see it coming back down yeah. and then starting to connect to the rest of the markets. Okay. It's funny. Main nets, mm -hmm. dev cons, launches you would suspect that these would increase the value. It it well, with this traditional market, when yeah. you bring the iPhone or the GoPro 7 to the market, the stocks pump. The problem with a lot of these companies is they're not spending the amount of time on the work to justify the funds or investments or application they're working towards. I hear you. So it becomes all smoke and mirrors. No, I hear you. So this is why in BitTorrent token... Um, Hold on. The coin that pays people for sharing illegal content. You got it. <laughs> You well, I'm, being, I'm being funny yeah. here. No, that, that, but that's that's honest and, and whatever. But the reason why I went into <laughs> it was because of the owner or the guy, I guess, who created Justice. it, right? Yeah. Because he has so much capital and because he already has another coin, I don't see him allowing this coin like to Like Charlie, die, though, he example. sold something like 80% of his Tron holdings. He holds very little Tron now. Yeah, sure, right? Um, but like but my, po my, point is, my point is, capital-wise, like he has the capital to hold the coin on its own. If he and that's why. Right? You asked me that's yeah. a smart thing. Selling off your coins at the top, mm -hmm. that's good business practice. You yeah. agreeing that they should ask for what they can get, that's good business yeah. dealings in, in, in the short term, Yeah. right? Okay. Let me be nice about yeah, it. Yeah, go for it. Because I like to play devil's advocate, and I want you all to appreciate this whole time I play devil's advocate, mm -hmm. I do like these projects. I think there's yeah. a lot of paces to make money. Mm -hmm. I think you can buy and sell shit coins day to day and make a killing. We're holding different perspectives on yes. some of this stuff. Yeah, and totally. that's important for the viewers totally. so that they can vet different yeah. options. Because yeah. I'm not right. I'm Neither right in some ways. Yeah. Right? Totally. But every time you make a dollar, I don't. You're right in some ways too. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> totally. So when we look at BitTorrent token, mm -hmm. The difficulty with torrents and torrenting is actually getting people to share the internet, yeah. to, to provide that content out to people, mm -hmm. to allow people to down. Because you remember when they were sending letters to people? Warner Brothers would send you a lawsuit for $200,000 yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. they caught you down. Because what yeah. they would do is they would put, turn on computers that were hosting the movies in full yeah. format, and they recorded all the people that connected to their computer and downloaded the movie. Yeah. And now none of them held up in court because they couldn't prove you downloaded the whole movie. Because okay. the way torrents work, you download parts of it for many people. Mm -hmm. The problem is, it's been there's been legal threats to people made for sharing these torrents. Mm -hmm. Your internet service providers, we were unlimited for a long time, and now unlimited comes in quotes, and they're trying to charge you more money for your for your data all the time. Totally. Data has almost gotten more expensive than less expensive. It's fucked. Yeah. Uh, this is the monopolization stuff in the Canadian industry showing mm -hmm. its face. This incentivates people to share. Okay? Yeah. Previously, the only way we had to do that was private groups. So if you shared a certain amount per month or per week, you were able to get into these lists of these torrents that were shared exclusively in these circles. Okay. So you could get the more shady stuff, or you could get the movies that were still in theater, or you could get the more expensive software cracked, AutoCAD or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you could get it a lot faster because these people were unthrottled. They were allowing it to download at two megabytes a second from their computer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the incentive was formally that you were able to access more stuff or you were able to do it faster. Okay. But that a day and most people just turn a bunch of torrents on and leave it and come back and it's all done. Yeah. They're not so concerned about instantaneous um, use of what yeah, you're trying yeah. to get at. Right, they're not looking for instant gratification. But what's happened over the last few years is people have stopped like sharing those files. A lot mm -hmm. less people share a lot less files. It's not as popular as it once used to be, and that's because of things like iTunes and Netflix and all these centralized models. People want to pay for their content. Yeah, I want to pay a band to go. I want to pay a band to go check out their concert. I don't want to listen to their music and decide it's bullshit and have paid fifteen dollars for it. Yeah. So for me, I watch movies. I, d I download games, cracked. I, 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 and then I pay for it if I like it. If okay. I if I listen to an audiobook, <laughs> yeah, and it's a good audiobook, I buy the book and I put it in my collection mm -hmm. every time. Yeah, and that's I think most people want to pay for their content. Yeah, and 
so Netflix and things was a, ended up being a really good solution. The market mm-hmm. ultimately was really hungry for a centralized sharing platform. So which is why you see the the application and the user base on BitTorrent and torrents in general drop. Mm-hmm. Of course, the government's gotten better at regulation. They've gotten more sophisticated and they've made more partners with companies like Shaw and Bell and Telus and Verizon. So now Bell and Shaw and Telus has actually blocked the Pirate Bay or these different torrenting websites from yeah. the internet service provider level. And mm-hmm. That's only done through government encouragement, right? Mm-hmm. So there's also regulations now entering the torrent space and there's a lot more control mechanisms that didn't exist before where they can make it more difficult to be involved. Yeah. So this idea of paying people to share makes a lot of sense. It's going to bring more interest and it's going to bring more audience and it's going to result in better experiences for everyone on the network. It will only result in more sharing. Mm -hmm. There's no other way to look at it. Yeah. Ultimately, it will only result in more people sharing more things more times because they will be receiving an incentive. Yeah. A direct financial incentive, perhaps, Mm -hmm. if it maintains its value by any means. Next coin up is going to be, for me, BNB, which is the Binance coin. It's shared off the exchange. It reduces the trading fees, such if you trade through BNB instead of BTC, you get a lower rate. Binance is the top used exchange. Number one exchange. Yeah. In, now in the, the BNB world, so. is a token yeah. which is created and printed at will by Binance, mm-hmm. which makes it really sketchy that it has any value. Uh, not really, because well, obviously if it it's maintains being used, its application, exactly. But it's like fiat currency in that they can print it at will. Okay. Which is where it goes away from blockchain. Mm-hmm blockchain philosophy most block most uh coins uh are capped they're limited right so even bitcoin there's a limit there's a finite but you talk about things like ripple or bnb yeah Yeah. and you're they're not yeah they can be because it's centralized they could say it's 21 million and three months from now they can change it Uh because they're the full authorship yeah right so even if they say it's limited it's not actually fucking limited Mm -hmm. look at bitcoin cash Mm -hmm. they just doubled the supply of bitcoin Mm mm-hmm like quite literally, mm-hmm. so in a, in some senses in in perspectives, so B and B coin, great, serves a great application, and I knew it was going to increase in value. I knew throughout the bear market it yeah. was going to be one of the only places that retained its value. I think it was the only <laughs> to be. Yeah, it, it may be a yeah. couple ICOs and a, a couple projects, yeah. stuff like Raven and some things have done well throughout the bear market. Mm-hmm. But it's got great application. But where it falls apart for me as a coin. And an investment and a holding mm-hmm. is in that it's centralized, it's printed at will, mm-hmm. um, and it's it's only maintained to a single entity. But that's the same for all currencies. No, I can go to any bank. I can yeah. go to any bank. Not with any kind of currency. I'm saying regular currency. But B, you can't trade BNB anywhere else. So if 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 Binance okay. ever goes offline, yeah the coins lose all of their application. Mm -hmm. So if any of anything from federal regulation to getting shut down to the CEO being held up at gunpoint, bails the smell test for me because it's centralized Mm -hmm. and it's printed at will. Okay. It's done well for me. From a financial (laughs) perspective. perspective, And from an application perspective. And as long as Binance exists and they're willing to use BNB tokens, Mm -hmm. it should provide some value to trading yeah but again i would never say leave any money in there yeah long term Mm -hmm. although if you did all year you'd be up and i told i told all my clients that are trading day traders yeah i tell them all to buy 100 bucks 200 bucks in binance and leave that in the account to fuel their trades yeah because that reduces your cost of trading on binance yeah like i i'll say this much i've been buying in and out of binance like You've been trading the coin. Yeah. Oh, I've been waiting on, on swings and then selling as, as a peak would happen and then a drop and then buy back, whatever. Um, <clears throat> it served me well. Another one that served me well, doing the exact same but thing. Let's just acknowledge yeah. it's the Greek IOU. No, I won't acknowledge that. Why? It's the bankers. <laughs> the bankers were pri- providing a financial here, service. Here, Here's the thing. Though, and dude. Hold on. Yeah. Instead of giving you a discount on trading, yeah. they gave you a physical quality. Okay. So you, gold is really fucking heavy. Mm-hmm. Paper is far easier to trade and do commerce with. Yeah. 
So the Greek banks that were giving you the IOUs, mm -hmm. it's they're providing a tra an economic trading. It's no different than the BNB coin. Mm -hmm. And it's discount. It's just not a financial discount, but it affects your life. You get to travel lighter. You need less workload. You don't need assistance. It's far less risky. Yeah. It it, it literally reduces the cost of commerce. Yeah. Just like the BNB token. In exchange token. for the risk of... And what happened to the Greek bankers? It's own coin. It all fell apart. And what happens every time they start writing IOUs? Yeah. It always falls apart this happens every okay. time my brother but binance isn't writing ious you know what i mean they're, they're not writing they're creating IOUs. the tokens out of for, for, there's no that's, coins backing that's fine them. but what that's doing that's only affecting the coins valuation you know that right so when they create more coins it just reduces the value of the coin okay that, sure. that's like the premise right that's the premise okay that's the thought so so i have no problem with them creating their more coins and having the valuation get lower slightly for whatever reason that they choose to do that obviously they do that based on their own analytics and everything that they decide to do right i'm not i'm not gonna uh mess with that what i'm looking at or they do is, it to make money yeah here here <laughs> is here is a coin or a token that is doing something it has an application that works it's on a uh, a platform, single exchange a single exchange very that, that is like the number one platform that everybody who trades crypto trades off of it only makes sense to be into binance coin especially if you're if it's reducing your trade fees you know um so so that's, that's <laughs> but it is it a greek iou most cryptocurrencies the value is based off the fact that it has Scarcity. users Forget scarcity. Sure. Users okay. is, is what makes it happen, right? You need Application. the users. Yeah. It's liquid. Okay. So if we go to your freemium model that we were talking about before, Google provided a search bar, okay, when they were nothing. Yep. They said, we're going to help you search through the internet. Yep. They provided you with, they still do provide you with a free service. They have other services now that aren't free, right? Like uh, Google Ads and all But that's stuff, a technology. Right? It's not a finance. No. Okay, dude. Our cryptocurrencies are also a form of technology. Representing finances. I know, but but listen, this is where I get into finance. Google is worth shit unless people like you and me visit it every day and type in and search through Google. Okay? Yes and no. They own, no, they yes, own a 100%. ton of technology. If nobody and went they to have Google, a ton of intellectual okay, property. Real quick, they have many applications no, in government now. and this military. Is now. They this provide they provide contracts Dude, to the military. But you are talking about the now. I am talking about the when. So when they first started. Sure. You could even use Yahoo if you want. Sure. What ask Jeeves sure. as a bad example of sure. what not to do. Okay. Google same method. They provided a search engine that worked quite well, and enough people would go there, which then increased the valuation of the company. Okay, that's why they're Google. Right, but that's... they weren't Google because they had this other thing, and then they added the search, and then blah blah blah. Well, blah. let me make it clear: they provided they're the only free Google because yeah. they diversified. What happened to Ask Jeeves and Before all of those other they players? In the though, they were just search. You remember this? They were sure. They were they were on top when they were just search. So, how many right? billions of dollars okay. does your company have to be worth? Before you start diversifying. Well, that's the thing. When you get that capital, they have okay, capital. now I have a shit ton of money. Of course, I'm going to start doing different things. Any other, just like me, if I invest in something, okay, and I make money off of it, I take that money and I reinvest. Try to make more money. With and it. make more. Yeah, that, that's just a normal, you go wider. a normal practice. So my point is that like, just like Google, okay, it's usership is the value. Okay. So if I see that here's a platform that has... Every user that knows crypto uses Binance. To say that they don't would be far-fetched because almost, I would say 99% of crypto traders at least use Binance or are familiar with it. If that application is there and it's cycling in a product, let's say like Google, okay, that, that is a search engine, okay, and, and it's it's cycling in this system, okay? Sure. And that system doesn't seem to be going anywhere and is still sure. on the top of the edge. There's no reason why I wouldn't put into Google Coin. So, okay. Do you understand? Yeah, but you understand. So, Google Coin, Visa yeah. Coin, Facebook Coin. Yeah. 
they're not cryptocurrency. Yeah. Just like BNB isn't cryptocurrency. Yeah. Because it isn't decentralized. Yeah. I I understand. It isn't that. a cryptocurrency. I understand. You can't what call you're it a cryptocurrency. Token. And, and pretend whatever. no, but I I it's understand not, what it's, you're saying. It's no it's no more a token yeah. than an inventory list in yeah. a computer for how many fucking social points you got for drinking beers at the beer okay, club. Okay, cool. But at the it's end of no the different. day, but at the end of the day, you're going to trust your money in that. No, at the end of the day, it provides a perk, right? In a form of value with but a with a very centralized it. perk. Okay. It's not like Bitcoin which you Dude. could then take to a hundred other places and use. It's only exchangeable in one place yeah. by one yeah. entity for one purpose. 100%. But that one place is where I'm getting all the other coins anyway. Okay. Do you see? I So it's like saying, well, the Google only allows you to search on Google. You, well, you still have Yahoo and all this other stuff, but people will always go to Google. So yeah, you're right. But there's right. a lot of merit and value right into in not using places like Google yeah. for accessing other information. It's like been what? shown, like during the politics, the Hillary Clinton stuff popping yeah. up on Google and all the other sketchy stuff, yeah. the search results. So the problems that Google has as the central location for searching, yeah. Binance has as the central location for finances. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Like I, I t so I'm, I'm totally here. Okay I'm here as that. an evangelist for the technology. Yeah. I want to get away from the banks. I want to yeah. get away from Facebook coin. Okay. That stuff is the cancer of society mm -hmm. that has led to all this corruption and and fat mm -hmm. and fraud and theft of the everyday person. Blockchain will enter almost everything. Yeah. And what it will remove is the IOU bullshit that yeah. the BNB coin, mm -hmm. that Ripple, and that all these other stable coins that aren't backed, yeah. that these printed fiat currencies are, all these Ponzi schemes that exist, it can't exist on blockchain because it's all accountable. And that accountability is not there. Not only is it not there, you don't even really know the structure of its accountability. Of course. To me... That scares the shit out of me that anyone uh, would – because that you, you're missing the whole point of the technology. You're just interested in making money. No, I'm not. I understand exactly what they're doing with BNB. It's the and, Greek IOUs. It's literally get, the Greek IOUs. I get what you're saying. You're, you're looking at Binance like it's a fucking country and it's not. The same way another company would be valued through usership. Okay? BitTorrent could be one of those companies. Okay? Sure. Usership. Sure. Right? Uh, Netflix usership. Sure. Okay. YouTube usership. Yeah. Okay. These are all companies that, in some way, either provide you a limited amount of things for free, or will give you a one month free trial, or in the end, they provide you, yeah, like here's a digital thing that doesn't exist that you could pay us for monthly or. What not you're talking at all, to whatever, is like right? entertainment, though. No, no, no. Digital. 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 What? Digital product. Digital service. What digital product? Okay? Uh, let me let me put it into like a, a service, a better, like a software, a uh, service or product. So in Netflix's case, it would be a service that has products. So for paying right? money, you're getting entertainment. Sure, right, and that would be the Netflix model. Sure, okay. Uh, in Google, you're not paying anything. You're giving you're, up your personal data for access to custom and, results, and and now what they're doing is through uh, uh, Google Ads because now more enough people go there, right? What makes Google that much profitable or that, that, like, this is how much Google is worth, okay, had very little to do early on with how much money they were making off adverts and more so what they had in usership. Their usership is what drove Google ads to exist, okay? What about MySpace? Where were, where were there, what was the longevity of that? Like, not everybody was into music profile shit, right? Not everybody was into MySpace and social marketing. What I'm they saying were really is early there on. was a lot of what MySpace. About no, hold on. Right about Napster. There was what a about, lot of Ask a lot Jeeves of things we could and there was like, a lot of about. Facebooks before there yeah. was Google yeah. and before there was Facebook. Yeah, and right? that's why we're talking so, about the big players. So what if you're you saying, ask me, Binance yeah. is going to yeah. be... If, based on its criminal behaviors and its yeah. fraudulent activity and its yeah. its general China hustle, mm -hmm. chasing the dollar instead of chasing the the tech mm -hmm. and the business practices, yeah, they're not going to sustain in the space. Okay. So if you ask me, does something that's 
printed and centralized and and only uh, redeemable by one person. It's like it's like everyone who got fucked on their Sears gift cards. Do you understand? Yeah, because the company went under. Right. Nobody was using their service. If you could you could have a hundred bitcoins and a hundred yeah. bitcoin companies could go under and you can't get fucked. Even suggesting that yeah. you have any that that value of that coin is going to be parred in any sense financially, yeah. in any technical analysis sense, or any real life situation, mm-hmm. to the value of the company is absolute bullshit. That breaks down any economics list. Economists listen to this right now is just cringing in their seat, hearing well, people say things. No, yeah. but people say things like this. Yeah. The BNB is like owning stocks in Binance. Yeah. No, well, if it's you're gonna, not. If you're going to compare Binance to Sears, I'm yes. going to put... I'm going to put those blinders on and compare Binance as a company so by and having B&B credits being its credit or By stock. having credits you with a it. centralized industry, yeah. when that Andy goes away, mm-hmm. all the risk goes away. What I'm yeah. saying is with Bitcoin and Ethereum and other wide usage coins, mm-hmm. you will never encounter that situation. Unless you're, you leave your Bitcoin on that platform's wallet. Well, that's what, because you're leaving your coins in a centralized I know, location. but it could still happen. Centralization is what kills I get people it. in this industry. I get it. I understand. It's what we're trying yeah. to get away from yeah. with blockchain. Totally. The, yeah. the f- we're trying to get away from the Facebook, the Binance, or the bank coin. Yeah. The, the Binance coin is no different than the JP coin. Mm-hmm. You have to appreciate that. Yeah. Right? So, I understand. So, that, except that the and the JP yeah. coin will have application in the financial industry because they'll be able to move money around yeah. at a reduced fee. Mm-hmm. But if you like the JP coin as as a as an application and as a as a technology, then you buy into mm-hmm. JP. You mm-hmm. don't buy JP coin. Yeah. yeah if totally. you like Binance's BNB coin, yeah. you don't buy BNB to hedge your bet. Mm-hmm. You buy in to BNB the. Or, Binance, Binance the company, the company. you yeah. acquire shares, mm-hmm. you you l- l- invest into the company, you leverage something against them and use yeah. that to get an investment in the company itself. Mm-hmm. Then you can say, I own a part of the company. Yeah. These fucking yeah, tokens are irrelevant. I'm not saying that those tokens are it's, making you own part of the company. What I'm saying is that I'm willing to put into that token because I understand the usership of that company sure and that it's same reason people use work. banks and their benefit the benefit to bnb is hey if you transfer through bnb we're going to reduce your transfer we're not arguing no which most we're not arguing about yeah, application yeah, exactly. it has yeah. great application yeah. i as a crypto user see it see it as a valuable application mm-hmm. i hold bnb coins for my trading fees. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But as a speculative investment, it doesn't yeah. meet any of the requirements that a cryptocurrency meets. Yeah, I'm not telling you to... Yeah, dude, you are you and I are on two different pages though because I'm like, this is what I'm swing trading and this is what I go into because I know it's going to hold for the most part because I know it's going to go up, blah, blah, this blah. This all this... Centra- but it's See, centralized. So yeah, how yeah. do you know this? Yeah, fair. You, you can't I know this I because I look at it like... Okay, Binance. How do you think people felt about Quadriga or NiceHash? Dude, I understand, but I'm and it, smart and, enough to get out of that. And literally every <laughs> every other week, another exchange goes down. Yeah, you just fair. you're just standing fair. here behaving like your exchange is, is immutable no. to all these. No, practices. no, 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 no. But it's less likely. It's for sure less likely. I would almost argue yeah. that it's a it's a larger target, mm-hmm. and that there's more hackers. And yeah. there's more people trying to infl- I'm not debating infiltrate that company. Yeah. And them, there's more people inside trying to do insider jobs. But for you to say that the company is going to go under on its own is to me. I think it's on the way. I think I it's think already. So. I think it's on the way out. I don't think. I think so. Binance is going to go under because of its is. business practices. I, I disagree. Yeah, unfortunately, but we'll but find could, out. But you're uninformed <laughs> on all these things. P- possibly, yeah. But no, I'm no, no, also no, horribly look, uninformed. Look. You're, you're you, trading you on this application up, that tones of tens up, of thousands of dollars listen, and you don't even explain. understand the sentiment in the market at Here's large. Here's the thing. You're bringing up specific instances that have happened with Binance. Sure. I'm not going to disagree with you. Even if some of the shit you say is wrong or far Everything I've said Everything is right. Everything you say is true. Okay? Yeah. I have no problem with anything they did. Once again, because it comes down to, dude, this isn't regulated. There are new business practices. People are coming into this market every day doing their own shit, trying to find their loopholes. If I'm in any business, 
any business, it doesn't matter if I'm good or bad, okay? If I'm in any business, I'm going to look for every loophole to help my company out. Whether it be opening my own charity because that allows me to uh, funnel my money out and make whatever. Buy a Lamborghini? Me. Yeah, whatever it may be. Okay. So, so let's let's use the correct terms here. Yeah. To embezzle and fraudulently no, steal money from there. a charity. No, no I'm not going to If gonna you're using there. a charity because to buy a Lamborghini, here's, it's here's fraud. Here's the thing. Here's the it's, thing. Oh, sorry. If you use a Lamborghini to – if you use a charity to here's buy a Lamborghini, is that fraud? Here's, here's is that why, embezzling? Here's why I say this. I don't know all the legal loopholes that these people are jumping through and why. So, and you don't either. It's a charity. Okay? No, here's the thing. I'm pretty familiar with most but of it. But neither of us are are legal experts and accounting experts I've, and I've taken economists. 2 years of law. Fair. I took cool. 2 and a half years of macro business. But that doesn't make us lawyers. Right. That doesn't make us lawyers, right? So, a really good business but it, lawyer but you can, for a company. But if I hire definitive. you and you're a lawyer that costs me a million dollars a year, but you're really good at your job because you know every single loophole and everything, yep. that's what I hire you for. The, I'll pay you a million dollars because you're going to save me five million dollars. Okay, That lawyer knows what the fuck they're doing and they're doing that those loopholes for their own reasons. And they know they can get away with it because of the current state of the laws and regulations. Except their charities just got okay. shut down. So they're not getting away with it. Sure. Okay. They so are we're, getting charged so with So we're going to see some repercussions come out of that, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So we'll wait. But I bet you anything that nothing – no, like, um, they we're not going to see they're Binance not allowed get to shut operate. down for this. That woman who took yeah. over the charity is yeah. legally not allowed to operate charities in multiple countries because cool. she has been charged with fraud. Are one of those countries China? So, I'm j- just like, is one of those countries China? So, you want to you do your financial business through China? No, no, no. What I'm saying is that if she is working for a company in a country where she is allowed it's to practice... It's in Africa right now is where it's okay. based. If, if she's in a country where she's working and she's allowed to work, legal loophole that we can't do anything about. Like, there's nothing we can do and, about and that. Maybe and maybe you, and you want something to do you with and those I, people. No, no, no. You I and, want nothing you, to yeah, do with You those and people. I have different ethics. Okay? Sure. So I could say, ethically, that's not cool. I could agree with you there. Okay? But I can't say that, well, like... She can't do her job. Like the the law can't say that. She's likely she going can. to jail. Okay. Well, let's wait and see, right? But you're right. Like I, I can sit here and, and a lot the law, of these people are going. If to the jail. law is all in the favor of what you're saying, then yeah, cool. Take her to jail or whatever it may be. But that only happens if, because they're using the traditional markets because they're centralized. If they were decentralized, mm-hmm. there is no legal authority. Yeah. There is no money. There is no charities stealing money. Okay. Because nobody's benefiting it from it in that same way. It's not about a central entity. Okay. So this is why I say everything about mm-hmm. it goes against the whole concept of blockchain. Mm-hmm. So 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 far you've said because we don't we could argue the For merits. Years. And yeah. the business of Binance and why I think it's not good and why you think it's good. But we still both use it. Yeah. We still both use Binance coins. That's my for that opinion. reason. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but if you ask me, yeah. BitTorrent, yeah. that's a no. For you, it's, it's a, a yes. yes. Binance coin, it's a no. For me, it's a yes. And why? Because yeah. both of those aren't are, are centralized. Yeah. Okay. Which literally makes them not a cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. So you're always trying to get more Satoshis. Yeah, and, and my whole thing is Satoshi Valley. So Ontology, interesting company. Mm-hmm. But again, for me, not a long-term hold. Yeah, no, none of... Here's the thing. Swing trades all throughout. All throughout this year, I've swing traded Ontology. I've swing traded BNB. It's worked out. BT, or BTT, BitTorrent token is newer. So I've literally like... And that's where you're seeing the most gains that. is products that are hitting the market out during the bear market. That's what I'm saying. So, like, Ontology, for example, has done very um, solid pumps and then very solid drops, which is perfect because, like, you you know this if you look at a chart the sort of, like, and long floors. enough. Yeah, you kind of get a good uh, judgment of the, how the flows Where working. the resistance is. You got Top it, Top and right? bottom. Top and bottom. So I've been able to vary uh, in a good way. Uh, top and bottom out on Ontology and BNB very well. And we so do this why, too. Yeah. So that's why like, I, I swing trade stuff things. like Bitcoin and Ethereum and Ripple because yeah. they're more predictable. Yeah, I do those too. But what I'm talking about is altcoin specifically. So yeah. I, I mean, Bitcoin and Ethereum, they're always there for me, right? And I'm always doing the same thing with those too. And I, I, I will happily put Bitcoins down 
on any of these. I am I you want to make a bet about a coin, you want to make a bet about the value next week, next month, next year. Yeah. I am so confident in my my macro perspectives yeah. that I will happily put my my private keys on the line anytime. And if you're asking me for one Ethereum today, yeah. I'm going to tell you, I bet you BTT will be worth less money next week and less money than I, that the week yo, after. I'm not look at me. I and I had this argument with Jason, for example. Right. Okay. Who, when, who is new but continues to keep he's getting good. smarter. He's he uh, keeps I have getting no, smarter. Yo, yo, Jason's awesome. But he this keeps getting smarter. Jason and I had had a bit of an argument about a Bitcoin bottom. Okay. Okay. And he was wrong. He thought it was going down to fifteen. No, 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 no. no. He I was, think we're at he the was, bottom. He was right. I said that I think it could go down to twenty five hundred or Never something. Never gonna like happen, that, not again. Right? And Jason's like, no, it's it's going up from here. Yes. Oh, that that was the argument. And this was recently, last month or two? This was like two months ago. Okay. Okay. And and that's when I started saying the same thing to Jason. Yeah. That we've we've hit the bottom of the cycle. Yeah. And I said, for you guys to say that now is too early. I need to see this shit go sideways for a while before I'd be willing to even consider that it's gonna go up. And and, and over yeah. the last two months, yeah. the floors mm -hmm. have continued. There's always up and down action, yeah. but every time it's higher than when it started. Exactly. Like the bottom has it's, it's raised. Higher. The floors it's continue to rise. It's minor, but it's rising, right? So, which, is, so, which is the polar opposite of what it's been doing for the last year. Yeah, which is a good sign, right? But the whole thing, my whole point is that Jason at one point said, okay, let's bet for what's going to happen at the, like, you think it's going to hit 2,500 at the end of the month? And I said, no. I said, I don't know. When yeah, that cycle could bottom. be another year before it. we see the bottom. Yeah, you got the, it. The cycle, every this, if you look at the analysis, the yeah. cycles have repeated themselves every exactly. time. Yeah. But there's more time between each cycle. Yeah, and so I'm not sitting here saying uh, that the next cycle, if the bull market runs and yeah. the market drops, it might literally be seven or ten years before before we see returns to former highs. Yeah, and I this is just that. technical analysis. Yeah. And. So my, my whole thing, and this goes back to BTT or BNB or ontology or any of these things, is that... But ontology is a blockchain. Yeah. Just BNB like, and... Just, dude, I'm going based on you're buying this and you're selling it and your whole plan So you speak it. strictly as speculative investment. Sure, yeah. Right? Using tech now strictly. and that's about it. Yeah. Okay. So if I bought BTT today at its current price and then BTT tanked, right? Yep. In my mind, I'm like, okay, I'm okay buying this at this price now, knowing that eventually I'm going to sell it at this slightly higher price. Yes, and that's now that, where I get my long yes. perspectives on stuff like Ethereum and yeah. Bitcoin. Now that, for me, could be a week. Yeah. It could be a day. It could be three months. Okay. It could be a year. Okay. With BNB, for example, I made a killing. Yes. But it took a year. Yes. So we're, yeah. we got two people who've made money throughout the bear market yeah. arguing with each other about perspectives. Yeah. <laughs> when literally the majority of other people, including the smartest people in the industry, yeah. have all lost money all year. Totally. Um, but that being said is like uh, my, my whole thing is when I say BTT now, right? Uh, it's not saying that it's not going to go lower. You know what I mean? It's not saying that it's going to go slightly higher or much higher, right? Yeah. It's to say that I'm okay with buying BTT at its current price, knowing that eventually, whether it be a month from now, a year from now, uh, what if three adoption never now, takes though? Well, that's why I have it, my it dwindles into nothing. That's why I have my stop losses in right. place too, right? So, like, understand, yeah, I'm coming at it from a bang for my buck perspective. Not and from, ICOs yeah. will always give you a better bang for your buck yeah. in the short and medium term. Yeah. Um, but that being said, but for the also most part, far more risky. Yeah, but understand for the most part, I'm also on your side. I I have Bitcoin, I have Ethereum, I do hold which those, I hope are those. those I hope that those are the majority of your holdings. Too. Yeah, so they're, they're <laughs> unless a large you know something portion. about a coin, I don't. No, that's about to hit portion, yeah. because let's all bring this back to the real way to make money. Yeah. The real people that are making money are insiders. That's where stuff like ontology, when people were finding out the different companies that were coming on board, that's where it got a lot of its value from. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, you want to be the real smart guy. Start making some insider friends. And I, I just, I hope that you can appreciate that when I'm sitting here, if you had Vitalik sitting here, 
he would have very similar opinions about stuff like BTT and Binance Coin, and he openly voices these same opinions on his Twitter all the time. Shitting I don't on doubt Binance, it. shitting on Tron, I don't and doubt Justin it. Sun. Yeah. But for him, it's an ethical perspective about blockchain at large. Yeah. Right. Whereas with you, you're looking at it from a financial gains perspective. Yeah. Do I want blockchain technology to succeed and prosper? Yes. Is that my main prerogative about no, this? You're no, you're trying to start a no. family, make a home, make, no, a, not tr- first make of all, a living for yourself. No, 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 stop. I'm not trying to start a family in any sense. That guy might be because he's married. I am not. Desperately. Thankfully. Amen. I practice every night. <laughs> But that being said, so I, it's not that I don't want blockchain technology to succeed and I don't want it to flourish and I understand. You get all that, right? That's not I, the narrative. I literally come at it through a money making perspective. You're right. Sure. Like, this is an investment to me. If you want to make money right now, now is the time to be hunting on those altcoins. Mm-hmm. There is gains all over. The people are seeing 150% gains you're talking about. That's what I do. In, in a fucking day. Yeah. If you're hunting. Now is the time. It's altcoin season. It is. Yeah. It is. <clears throat> and that's only because we're at the bottom of this bull run. I'm I'm the longest you can long on Ethereum. Yeah. Um, Ethereum is the majority of our holdings. And we do most of our business in Ethereum. Okay. Second would be something like Bitcoin. Now, I hate to say it right now, but I'm holding a lot of Ripple. Because it's deviations right now. But I do not think Ripple is a long hold. I think even having Ripple for a day is risky as hell because XRP is not necessary for the Ripple technology. But yeah, you got to be careful. So I like Ethereum Hmm. as a tech play. Yeah. I think Ethereum is the Google, the IBM, the Microsoft of everything going on right now. Mm -hmm. And I think that it, it won't get sold off. It won't get bought up and it won't get conglomerated. I think at some point the Ethereum Foundation will take over the full consensus and it will become a full non-profit entity trying to usher in good and eliminate corruption in the world. Let's hope so. And I don't think there will be a single other blockchain that will become a full non-profit in that sense. Okay. I think Bitcoin is a good hold because Bitcoin can see we see lots of value. Mm-hmm. Whereas I can't get, I can't tell you where BTT is going because there's no analysis from from any former markets. Yeah, there's no real asset physically that's there, mm-hmm. and there's no adoption in the industry yet. No one's mm-hmm. using it in any sense. You can't exchange it anywhere. It's not really, it's not used. Yeah. So so whereas I can't I can't tell you where it'll be in a year, two years, five years. I can guarantee you that Bitcoin will likely be around. Yeah. And still used, mm-hmm. and so I like that as a long term hold. Totally. And then when it talk, when you talk about things like making money day to day, I need to listen to people more when they tell me insider information. I do. I've lost a lot of opportunities by not taking the advice from people mm-hmm. when they people I trust and people whose information I trust when they've yeah. told me this is about to to see multiple gains. My morality or ethics or industry application or whatever results in me not seeing those gains always and the difficulty is a lot of people aren't emotionally mature enough to do this day trading to take the gains Mm -hmm. a lot of people will say i'll sell it this much but then they don't you know we had a couple clients who were millionaires Mm -hmm. put four or five thousand in and became millionaires on stuff like ethereum and I was unable to talk them into cashing it out. They kept talking about capital gains. Who the fuck cares about taxes? I Congratulations. Know, you're making enough money no that shit. you get to pay taxes. Jesus. And you're making so much money at That's once so that you get to pay that. capital gain taxes. Yeah. What is wrong with that? It's like the number one question I get. What about tax? Do you have to pay tax? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. So you should what? feel <laughs> awesome to pay taxes <laughs> because, on, because that means you're making money. Right. So so this is it. These decentralized coins, these these wider applications, they involve a lot less risk. Mm-hmm. If you get hit by a car yeah. or if internet goes down or if a bunch of things get hacked, mm-hmm. right? There's there's a Yeah, there's it's more risk adverse. 
Totally. And I hate it. I hate it. It kills me. I lose profits all the time. I have to tip my hat to you when you make money and I don't. But I'm going <laughs> to rub it in your face when you lose money that I don't. Uh, and that's just the nature of, uh, yeah. of these adversarial relationships that totally. people should have in this market. Yeah. You should be arguing about perspectives mm-hmm. and coins all the time. Yeah, 100% I agree. And, and hear people out. Totally. Where it took me a little bit to get through some of your armor. It did. But when I started reducing <laughs> things to the decentralization, I think you started to appreciate some of my perspectives a little oh, more. Oh, for sure. No, I understand everything that you right. said and that you're coming from or whatever, right? Right. But like I'm coming at it from a completely different mindset and point right. of view. So I like but like but let's just close it out. Yeah, let's I like it. projects that pass the smell test. And the difficulty with the tech industry and the cyber industry is a lot of these people have checkered past to begin with. Mm-hmm. A lot of executives, a lot of CEOs, nobody's squeaky clean. Totally. And especially when it comes to cryptocurrency and this destabilizing, this monopolize, overthrowing, this decorruption industry. And the largest application of cryptocurrency for the longest time was illegal, illicit activity. Yeah. So I do appreciate that, that you know, this, there's two ways to become a security consultant. Okay. Mm-hmm. You either get, it's, it's like uh, you either get arrested for hacking into computers or you work at a security firm for 20 years and then you finally get the six figure salary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You either go to jail and come out in six years and you got a Fed job waiting for you, or you bite the bullet for 20 years and you end up at the end of the rainbow, right? Mm-hmm. Well, this cryptocurrency stuff is the same way. There's the fast and loose and there's the slow and low. Okay. Right? Yeah. And if you want to make your money and maybe get thrown in jail, that's fine. Mm-hmm. And there's upsides to that. You got a job waiting for you when you get out. All these malware hackers, they opened up nice hash. These identity fraud sellers online, they opened up these companies where people are now sending identity information to them willingly. Yeah. Like, you can't make this shit up. Of course not. You can't. Yeah. The malware producer is putting programs in everyone's computer. My God. So, I'm here for the risk reduction. I understand that my perspectives aren't the most profitable. But I think they are the most risk adverse way to approach this. Mining top 10 coins and really being critical about the industry's application and usage. Totally. So now your perspectives for day trading, mm-hmm. wh- how would you summarize that? You're here for what? I want to see Mash Adopt. Yes. Say it again, brother. Money. Say it one more time. I'm here for all the money. <laughs> Yeah. See, even Lucas so he, is here even for the Lucas money. likes the money. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. I mean, I I tell I tell people all the time, like they're like, oh, what coin? What coin? What coin? And I'm like, man, I'm not I I'm not in a relationship with any, any project projects. other than Ethereum and Bitcoin. I don't care about your coin as long as it's making me money right now. Okay. Okay. So. Yep. And I'm going to go based on TA the whole way through, technical yep. analysis the whole way through. Yep. And that's how I make my decisions. And most of them are swing trades and it works. So, you know, haven't been really burned, you know, and when I lose, I lose one or two percent. And when I gain, I gain 25 plus percent. Um, I try to I try to always gain 25 percent or more. Yeah, I like taking 15 yeah. and I lose upside a lot. But I like I put all my cells at fifteen. Yeah, I take that. I if you can 25. take fifteen percent, yeah, a few times a week or a couple once a week, mm-hmm. twice a week, you're making a hundred percent on your overall holdings in a month. Yeah, it's dope, right? If Ethereum can get its voting consensus together, it's the only thing holding it back right now. All the software, Constantinople, um, uh, Istanbul, uh, Prague POW, all these new techs, the Zsnark, all these things are ready. They just can't agree at the implementation cycle, proof of stake. They don't know if they, because the difficulty is they're going to have to fork every time to make these large software updates. Mm-hmm. So do they wait six months and finish all the software and then fork with it all? Or do they fork four times between now and then to continually introduce these new technologies? How do you test these things out? Do you run a test net and reward people? We actually participated on one of the Ethereum test nets. Okay. We were paying us wicked amounts of Ethereum for doing nice. this. Vitalik was doing rewards for the test net. That's so true. so if Ethereum can get its shit together, I think it's about to see a huge value increase based on the proof of stake, which is okay. going to pe- result in people looking at Ethereum as a stable coin yeah. and treating it as mo- more of a bond style of investment where you buy your money, you leave it there, 
you get your 47% a year. Word. Right? And I think that that's going to appeal to a lot more traditional investors. And that also results, that encourages you to buy and hold. Mm -hmm. So a lot more of the miners, instead of being liquid, are going to put that money into this holding so they can get that return on investment. So if you ask me, the second that proof of stake hits Ethereum, you're going to see those floors rise, 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 rise. Where can people catch you, man? Of course. So uh, I'm at, at SpillyGuy on Twitter. It's good underscore guy underscore biker on Instagram. Uh, it's Sir Crypto Kings on Facebook, facebook.com slash Sir Crypto Kings. Um, facebook.com slash good guy biker. That's my personal profile. I'm very outspoken on there. Feel free to chat me up, add me on there. Uh, and of course, our YouTube channel where we do the majority of our posting is Motorcycles Vancouver. I'm working on that. I know the name doesn't make sense. <laughs> good guy biker stuff. But yeah. uh, that's where most of our content went up. We just put a whole bunch of really good podcasts up there, long form podcasts similar to this. Nice. And I think that uh, in the same way, we had several different opinions in the room. Nice. And I want to keep doing that. Yeah. And I agree with this guy more than I'm letting on. <laughs> I really do. And I like the way that he approaches the industry uh, just for the sake of adoption. Yeah. I'm playing devil's advocate. You guys yeah. got to appreciate that. Totally. Well, thank you, brother. Thank you for coming. Man. And you know what? Yeah, for fun. No Fun Allowed... I kind of had a lot of fun today. Last podcast was good. I've listened to Thank a couple you. of them now. You got awesome. more contests coming out. Yeah. Every 100 subscribers you mentioned. I do do a contest we, for every 100 subscribers. You just broke 200. You automatically entered. Yeah, and we're going to be announcing that winner coming up soon. They're going to win a 10 tree hat Such of their hat. choice. I know. And I'll be giving away a 10 tree product for every prize pack from here on out because I am now officially a 10 tree ambassador as well. Brand and ambassador work. Love it. They're going to win. Oh, whoops. They're going to win uh, Launch Party, which is another book done by David Denman, who's the guy who I, we gave away um, a couple of his books to or whatever. And uh, we will catch you next time with a very special guest, our first female guest. Oh, exciting. Ariane uh, Sealer. And what's she, what's she, what's she that going to be about? She is AKA known as Sloan, and she is a professional wrestler. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Wild. Yeah. We got our first badass female coming in. I'm so stoked because it took me a while to get a female. That is the end of the No Fun City podcast. Please subscribe, like, share, comment, all that jazz. Special thanks and shout out to Roots of Fight for the extra swag and gear. Much appreciated. Thank you, Jesse, who is the owner. Peace out. Bye, Ethereum. <laughs>Today's episode of No Fun CD is brought to you by Roots of Fight. Check them out at rootsoffight.com and be sure to hit subscribe for your chance to win an awesome prize pack.